The Lulberts, that's our words, brought to you by apronsarenotacrime.com. That's a legitimate one this time. I'm not making <laughs> that one up. And I'm here with <laughs> to Sauce, <laughs> a.k.a. Matt Pritchard. How's it going, man? Pretty good. Welcome yeah. to the show, everyone. Welcome to the show. I'm your host, Jim Jesus. We got a great show for you tonight. It's the best show. It's going to be a great show. Call in now. <laughs> Fuck callers. <laughs> you guys are horrible. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We don't want to hear It's never you. worth it. Never worth it. I want to talk about George Soros. Oh, God, no, please. Um, uh, so, yeah, let's. You know what? Since I'm not going to do a straight ad this time, <laughs> or a fake straight ad this time, uh, we should talk about apronsarenotacrime.com, which is Steve Miller Miller's new apron company. Um. Let me see if I can pull up because the website is different than, and of course, you can't highlight shit with, that you want to on Twitter. God damn it. Right. Just what's it called? <laughs> Aprons are not a crime. Aprons are not a crime dot com, a.k.a. Nifty Apron Purveyors. And the, uh, the the initials are NAP. <laughs> right. Nice. Nice. I can appreciate that. And uh, he's got he's got one that's on the way. I forget what, which one it is, but it's kind of making fun of Trump. MAGA hats. It's going to be red. Mm-hmm. It's going to say, like, I don't know, make food great again. I don't know. And then uh, the one that he has for sale right now is non aggress the cook. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. I'm looking at it right now. Yeah. It's great. And that uh, does look like a nifty apron, and I will probably get one. Yeah. 13 bucks. And it's got pockets too. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, where should we start? There's a whole bunch of stuff to talk about. Should we start with Star Wars? Yeah, I mean, why not? Yeah, (laughs) I think I've literally only not talked about Star Wars on this show just one time. Yeah, that was that was the last one, and we even mentioned it. Like, we got to talk about the new Star Wars stuff, and then we didn't. (laughs) So that's right. That's right. Papa was so much more interesting. (laughs) Yeah, I got to do laundry tonight, but I'm gonna wait until after the show because I have class. Um, so. Star I, Wars! I've never once. Oh my god, Star Wars! We should talk about it. What's what do you what do you think is? Do you think it's going to be good? Because there's a lot of kind of debate whether or not this one might be good or not. I just want to say for the record, I have never claimed to have class, so <laughs> you can just take that. <laughs> we do live in New York. It's kind of implied. We got yeah. cult, we got the culture. <laughs> I saw Freddie got fingered at the AMC. That's culture right there. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, anyway, well, Star Wars, I am hopeful for this one. Um, I mean, I mean, I will see any Star Wars movie that they make. Uh, even if they put George Lucas back in charge, I'd still go and see him. <laughs> I, I may um, skip those. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't. I mean, the memes alone will just be incredible. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm pretty hopeful for this one. I, the, the director, I saw Looper, which I really enjoyed. Uh, the, it's a movie that, you know, doesn't make any sense. Uh, time travel wise, but, um, I really enjoyed that movie. And this one from the trailer looks like it's going to be pretty cool. Uh, I have no idea what it's going to be about. There's been like some potential spoilers out there, um, which I am totally game to talk about. Uh, if you are. Yeah. Uh, have they released spoilers or is it all speculative spoilers? It's, uh, there's some speculate. It, it's mostly speculation, but it's stuff that, actually sounds very plausible okay and a lot of we should talk about some of the things that people were saying that are definitely not true yes Um, (laughs) there are many luke is the father of ray yeah that's not gonna happen not gonna happen sorry i I knew that from the from the get-go i was like that's that's a that's a stupid (laughs) prediction going yeah yeah. like that would that would be the least possible creative thing that they could do and they would be made fun of for it it would just it would be merciless the one thing that i'm really hoping on is that they don't make luke go to the dark side i'm much more interested if he becomes like a gray yeah (laughs) i I, I think that's actually the what is being heavily implied Mm -hmm. and all of the uh surrounding star wars content that's being made by disney that is canon has been pointing in that direction very very heavily uh, the Star Wars Rebels cartoon, yes, I watch a children's show, uh, has been pointing in that direction for um, a long time now, yeah. like very, very obviously, too. So I think that's kind of the direction that they're going to go in. Um, the uh, I don't think Luke's going to turn to the dark side. It looks more like he's like kind of shaken and 
and his uh, confidence and faith and using the force is is not what it used to be. Mm-hmm. Um, I uh, I think I know who Ray's parents are. Uh, again, from Battlefront. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's from Battlefront. <laughs> it's pretty obvious. I didn't buy the game. I watched all the story sequences. How could you on possibly YouTube, afford though. it? <laughs> I know. See, that's the thing. I actually was going to buy the game before the the uh, the microtransactions apocalypse happened. <laughs> um, but then I went online and it was like 70 bucks or something. I was like, that's insane. I am not paying $70 for a game that's then also going to make me pay extra just to play as Darth Vader. Yeah, I don't um, want to I don't want to pay 70 bucks for a game this side of the uh, ca- uh, cartridge era. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Like it's it's completely unreasonable. Um so I don't have to buy it. So that's that's the wonderful thing about capitalism. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it it's very it's it it seems very heavily implied that uh, her parents were uh, two ex special forces um, imperial soldiers who defected uh, after Return of the Jedi. Um, the uh, the graphics on this on that game are like absurd uh absolutely absurd and they did all sorts of like motion capture for it and so like all the facial animations were actually captured on the actual actors that you're seeing in the game uh so it's very convincing very cool so by absurd you mean good i I haven't even seen anything from it the only thing i've heard is a fallout and i was like oh i'm not getting near that dumpster fire Oh no, it's yeah. it's super impressive. Okay. Uh, the voice work is all good. Like they actually hired like real actors, um, and it's it it's pretty fantastic. The story I thought was pretty cool. Um, there's valid criticisms to it. Like some of the missions, like what? Okay, here's my here's my big problem with it with this game that I have not played. Uh, <laughs> uh, one of my favorite video <laughs> games of all time is uh, Tie Fighter, a uh, really old space flight simulator uh, from the the early '90s. Uh, I remember we got that game when it was, and it was on like six or seven floppy diskettes, like just, and it was like huge. Uh, and it was a fantastic game, had a really good story and you were just unapologetically the empire. Like you were a TIE fighter pilot, uh, fighting all the way up until right before return of the Jedi, uh, you know, killing rebels and, you know, uh, helping the Emperor and Darth Vader and all this stuff. It was awesome. Uh, and there really hasn't been a game that has just allowed you to be the bad guys in this conflict for a long time. So that was like one of the major selling points was that you play uh, a member of Inferno Squadron. You know, they're the the, the Navy SEALs of the Empire. Um, but, of course, the character... Joins the rebellion at some point, which I thought was kind of disappointing. Um, but it's so well acted that it was, I was, you know, I was actually, I was okay with it. Um, but yeah, this, uh, these two characters, one of them meets Luke Skywalker at one point. Uh, the game shifts away from you playing as this, as this girl, uh, Iden Versio, to playing, you know, Star Wars characters like Han Solo and Princess Leia and Lando Calrissian and Luke Skywalker, which, kind of uh i think damages the story itself because Iden versio was like an actually an interesting character um but the game looks fun just not 70 dollars worth of fun with no dedicated servers on multiplayer on pc which yeah. is just absurd um but yeah so is han so, solo does han solo do that little dance I'm han uh, solo I'm han solo he he doesn't do the dance but he does have a fucking weird looking beard in the game i have no idea why they gave him a beard but he has one and he doesn't sound like han solo because they did not get harrison ford to do the voice yeah i think he's just done <laughs> is that like i he imagine was, so yeah it sounded like he was done when he's he was wanted doing to be done with yeah. star wars for a long yeah. long time yeah, basically they, since return of the jedi he yeah was, yeah, yeah. He, was he, he wanted his character to be killed <laughs> off it was actually written in the script to be killed off but you know yeah. studios were like no we love han solo we got to keep him yeah around. we gotta <laughs> we gotta you know we want we want to sell some more han solo toys mm-hmm. <laughs> uh which they did um but yeah Iden versio the the kind of lead up the the ending of the game uh spoiler warning takes place at the battle of jakku it's like after return of the jedi so it's this 
it, you know, when when Ray in The Force Awakens is, you know, rummaging through Imperial Star Destroyers and AT-ATs and things like that, uh, it's because of this battle that happened. Uh, very, very impressive. And then she and her squad mate uh, hook up at the end of that. And then it jumps forward, like, I don't know, like 30 years or so. It's like right before The Force Awakens. And uh, the guy that she hooked up with uh, gets captured by the First Order. And Kylo Ren, like, gets into his mind to try and find the map to Luke Skywalker. It's like the setup, basically, for The, for the Force Awakens. And he's, like, talking about, like, oh, you thought, you know... Uh, that your daughter would change things and blah, blah, blah. And so it's like, it, it fits very nicely with the timeline of when uh, Ray is born and whatnot on Jakku. Uh, you have two good looking people in the Star Wars universe that fell in love. And then Kylo Ren and other characters are dropping hints that they have a daughter. Uh, so Ray's parents, uh, I think it's safe to say are Aiden Versio and whatever the other guy's name is. Whatever the guy's name is. Yeah. You heard it here. Whatever the guy's name is. You heard it here. Yeah. <laughs> so that's interesting. Um, yeah, it doesn't sound like an $80 game. I don't know. Um, no. The price is, I think the price key is climbing. I think we said it was 60 originally and then we went up to 70 and now it's 80. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I still haven't gotten around to getting Cuphead yet. And that's only 20 bucks. Uh, so if anyone wants to buy yeah, it for which me, which looks yeah. awesome. Internet yeah. Jim Jesus is my steam handle. Uh, I could use a bir- early birthday present. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then there'll be no more shows because I'll just be stuck on Cuphead. Like, God damn it. I can't get past the fourth level. <laughs> 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 Fuck this game. Yeah, that game just looks beautiful. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just really hoping that they, do, they make a uh, Luke uh, Grey Knight because that's such an interesting kind of concept. And it hasn't been in any of the films. Um, right. And I, I, even if it was in the first, I, you know, I still have not seen the second half <laughs> of uh, e- episode two, and I still haven't seen episode three. I tried, I was like, all right, I'm going to sit down, I'm going to watch it. Oh, dude, you're missing out on some funny shit. Really? Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, at this point, like, it, you'll appreciate all of the memes much, much more if you, if you slog through it. It's very funny. <laughs> They're terrible movies. Like yeah. if you want them to be good Star Wars films, that's not going to happen for you. But they're <laughs> they're really really funny. <laughs> All right, uh, but that second one, the first one was like Phantom Menace was just so bad. And it was I, I, really terrible. Yeah, I remember watching it and going like, I, I wanted to like it. Like it was a stage of denial for me when I was growing up. Like, oh, I wanted to like it, and I was looking for anything to grasp onto. Uh, Natalie Portman's hot. Yeah, there we go. And that's the reason why yeah. I like it. Yeah. No. <laughs> just, yeah, no. I think. I think I was in like sixth grade when that movie came out, and I remember thinking at the time, being like, "That was cool. Like, I had a lot of fun." But I was like, "That didn't feel like Star mm-hmm. Wars, like at all." <laughs> Felt fake. Because everything was behind a green screen anyway. Because everything yeah. was fake. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, oh, here's um, here's another uh, potential spoiler fan theory that I actually think makes a lot of sense as well. Everybody's like, "Who's Snoke? Who's Snoke?" I think Snoke is actually just Snoke. <laughs> wow, he's not. Yeah, but here's the part that's actually kind of interesting. So in Rogue One, uh, the two Chinese guys uh, who were guarding the the temple on are, are you talking about the ones that were in Episode One? No, not the, not the, not the, <laughs> not the uh, horrifically offensive Asian stereotype aliens. No, I'm talking about the two actual Chinese human beings. <laughs> okay, what happened uh, to your face? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so they, uh, they're they're called the Guardians of the Wills, uh, and the Wills uh, in Star Wars lore, yeah, when George okay. originally wrote the wrote the movies, uh, that this was all going to be something that was being narrated from this thing called the Journal of the Wills. And so, wait, these, in, these are the same guys that were in well, one of the guys that was in Rogue One, the blind guy that was kind of like yeah. quasi Jedi's, no, but not really. The, yeah, yeah, he okay. was more like a like a like believed in the Force, but wasn't like a Jedi like mm. wielding it. Yeah, so they they were the guardians of the wills, and the wills they need were more something. I guess. Yeah, they have they have some <laughs> connection to the Force, <laughs> but they uh, 
in the uh, the Star Wars Clone Wars television show, the Wills show up when Yoda event, uh, goes to Dagobah, and he goes into the the uh, the cave where you know Luke goes in and has that kind of trial where he sees Vader and he chops off his head, and then the mask opens up and it's and he sees himself. He like fails that test. Well, Yoda goes to that cave and he has this vision of Palpatine and like all of this evil. Um, and these beings talked to him, uh, and they were the wills. And so they're like very, very connected to the force and they look kind of odd, but when you put Snoke side by side with them, they look like the cartoon version of Snoke. Mm. And so they've been pushing this whole gray narrative and bringing back the wills as some sort of canon thing. And Snoke is probably one of the wills and his reasoning for trying to get a hold of both Kylo Ren and uh, Ray may be uh, to try and abandon the whole uh, light dark dichotomy and have, you know, like the embodiment of the light and the embodiment of the, of the dark and trying to like actually bring balance to the force, whatever that means. Yeah. Um, <laughs> whatever so, that means. Yeah, way I have no idea what that means. I it's never made any sense. <laughs> um, but it's, it's they sure possible talked about a lot in the first two couple of movies. Oh yeah. my god, and they never explained it at all. And they kept talking about this prophecy, and they never explained what the prophecy is or why it's important. Who came up with it? Like it's just such a <laughs> Titanic mess. Um, but for, for but yeah, all the I, talking that was in those that what I saw of those first two movies, they think they'd explained something. No, nope. yeah, but they don't. They nope. like and, and you're completely right. They just sit there and they just talk about shit that doesn't matter and that nobody cares about. <laughs> and, about sand. and a PG movie in a PG movie for kids, for kids. Yeah. Yeah. For kids. Talking They're talking about, about the trade and taxes. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the taxes. God, it's like those movies are so bad. There's like a kernel of a really good idea in them. And Mm -hmm. that is the rise of Emperor Palpatine and the fall of Anakin Skywalker. Yeah, I will will say that Palpatine was probably the best part of the whole thing. Oh, yeah, absolutely was. Absolutely. I mean, (laughs) he's just the devil and he's awesome. Yeah, he, he, yeah, Palpatine is the best character in Star Wars, (laughs) like Mm -hmm. hands down. Um, but you would think they've been more over Vader. Um, yeah, I think okay. so. I think Emperor Palpatine takes the cake, but I mean, Vader is, is like just awesome. He's, you know, like space Hitler. <laughs> so, okay. He basically is. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> that was or something the, yeah, like, like I actually don't think that he fits the, the Hitler mold so much. He, I don't know who he who he maps to in 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 the real world, but he's just like some sort of like. I love that he exists outside of the official military chain of command, and he's just this like. I I can't even describe him. He's just the best. Yeah. Darth Vader's amazing. <laughs> well, second best. Palpatine's the best. Ever. Second best. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Palpatine is the most enjoyable thing to watch in Star Wars. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Too bad it was in terrible movies, but <laughs> yeah, this is one saving grace of those films. It yeah, was in I, one good one. Yeah, I when I when when the when the movies came, were the was it the last or the new fucking last Jedi? That's the one that's coming out now. Uh, Correct. Shit, uh, not a new the New Hope two point <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the Force, <laughs> the Force Awakens. There we go. Yeah, the Hope Awakens. The, the Hope Awakens. Um, when I, when that was getting ready to come out, I was gonna watch all of them in a row, and I started watching Phantom Menace, and I was like, "Oh fuck this!" I I, I got I slogged through that one again, and I was like, "I can't, I can't handle, <laughs> I can't handle more yeah. of this." I'll just watch. Yeah, yeah I, I ended up just watching the um the Mr. Plinkett reviews, and just like that's that's that. I'll just watch the that's, Plinkett I, reviews. I've I've done similar types of things where I'm like maybe I'll I'll try and watch the prequels again and then I'm like no I'm just gonna watch the the, the reviews <laughs> yeah <laughs> so I just watched the blanket reviews and so that's how, that's how I know all the memes um but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna slog through those I'm just not doing it that's good enough you should man <laughs> <laughs> I don't know and they're then, really bad <laughs> yeah. So the Plinket reviews were good enough, and then I was just like, okay, I watched those. I'm gonna watch. Then I watched the I I watched the um, the desaturate. What is it? The despecialized editions. Um, yeah, yeah, which are fantastic. Great. 
it's amazing what they did in order to get to get the original theatrical cuts. Yeah, and just absolutely incredible, and just like the dedication that those people had to to getting it back to the way it was originally released is yeah. just phenomenal. My hat is off to those guys forever. Yeah, yeah. If, if only we can get the 4K versions to come out now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> do it all over again. Um, yeah, I think they're talking about re-releasing them. I hope they do. Um, I hope so. Yeah, there's no reason not to. It's free money. Yeah. And you know they have all the rights to them now. At least Disney does. Do they? I don't know. Maybe do they not have the rights to the first one? Because I think they have the rights Fox. to everything. Okay. Yeah, I think I think they have the rights to everything. Okay. Um, because I mean they have the rights to the characters, mm-hmm. uh, for sure. But I don't know. I'm I'm looking forward to this one. I uh, I'm cautiously optimistic. I really hope that it doesn't get you know that it's not like bland. And I don't think it will be just because the 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 people in the movie are so charismatic. Like, say what you want about Daisy Ridley's character being, you know, Mary Sue or whatever. I don't think she that's was, true. I don't think it's true either. But she was so charming and charismatic, and Oscar Isaac was amazing. Uh, like, just it was a it was so much fun to watch that movie that I anticipate this one will be fun as well. Yeah, and though it does look significantly darker. Yeah, like. <laughs> So like a, a lot of the criticisms that I was reading, and we, I don't know we'd already talked about this, but I don't care. We should talk about, we should brush over it quickly again. Like all the reviews I kept seeing, like how does Ridley Scott, like she's just like this feminist trope that, you know, she just has all these powers all of a sudden. I'm like, dude, there was a really important sequence. I guess everybody was just falling asleep at it at, I guess, I don't know that dream sequence where she yeah. picks up the lightsaber. There was a lot of information really packed in there. And, like I, I had to watch that part a couple of times just to really capture everything that was happening. But it was pretty clear once even even at first pass, I was like, oh, shit, she she was she had training <laughs> like she had Jedi yeah. training. And and my, my whole this, thing is my, she, my she whole was thing, a youngling. Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at this as like you're really upset about the realism in a movie about space wizards. <laughs> And that's not I'm, that's not me shitting on Star Wars. I love that there are movies with space wizards in it, but yeah. it's like this, like who cares? <laughs> who cares? Yeah. It was a fun movie, and I'm sure that she's going to have trials and tribulations in this next one that she doesn't just you know like fly the ship automatically. Yeah, and, and, and she she didn't she didn't fare that well at, if you really think about it. Like she uh, she almost got her ass kicked by Kylo. She almost did. She barely yeah. made it out of that thing. And the only reason why probably Kylo <laughs> lost was because he was already kind of hit once already and was bleeding. Yeah, he, because he got shot yeah. by that. Oh, yeah. By and the he got shot. Caster. Yeah. And he also, then yeah. he had to fight, you know, someone who didn't know anything about it, but still kind of threw up a good fight. Um, and, he, and he just killed his father, which he was clearly conflicted about. <laughs> yeah. He wasn't exactly in his, his, he wasn't on top of his game. Yeah. He wasn't so. in his final form. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's just like, uh, you know, the force, the force that exists. Yeah. It's fighting through her. Like, come on. It's a movie. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's literally Lord of the Rings, just not in the, the kind of setting that I'm not, I'm not a big fan of the fantasy genre just because, you know, I'm just not a big fan of dragons and wizards and walking. Nobody's perfect. Walking. Walking. Three movies. Nobody's walking. perfect. Yeah. I'm, hey, well, <laughs> I, 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 I like... Like okay, I don't. I don't, I don't like okay, size. I'm not saying that Lord of the Rings was bad. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that that's fine. No, it's not a fair for criticism. Me. Yeah, it's a, it's it's a lot of walking. I totally get that. But I the kind of like uh, and and I really do like fantasy. But as kind of a flip side to this, I love science fiction as well. And the type of science fiction that I adore is the really long, slow plotting science fiction that everybody hates and so when people are like yeah the lord of the rings is boring i'm like great <laughs> You're, it's awesome <laughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't say that it's well, i wouldn't say that's boring i mean that's that was one aspect but it's it's boring with a kind of a theme that i'm not a big fan of which is wizards and warlocks and just tired of it <laughs> like i grew up yeah. with that stuff and i just kind of like all right i'm tired of it i'm tired of this trope um yeah it's just a, it's just a per- personal preference. Like if anyone asks me, like, is Lord of the Rings good? I'll be like, do you like these kinds of movies? Then you're, you're going to love it. 
I'm yeah. not a big fan. You probably would like it. And I'm not a big uh, and I'm not I'm well, not a big fan. I'm not, uh I do like slower stuff. Like I actually enjoyed the first Star Trek movie and I'm not a big Trekkie. I actually enjoyed it. You know, the whole yeah. slow kind of thing and very it was very kind of it really wanted to be um uh, a space odyssey. Um <laughs> but didn't yeah. but it didn't seem like it was it was it, it understood Space Odyssey at the same time, but I I did enjoy it. Yeah, it, that's not the problem. It it was just that I liked the theme better <laughs> of being yeah. in space. Yeah, no, I get yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, okay, good. <laughs> you know, it's not the Matrix <laughs> or anything. <laughs> <laughs> I look. <laughs> that's going to be a the Matrix theme throughout this whole podcast from here I on know, out. I know. The <laughs> Matrix is fantastically entertaining uh visually it was revolutionary it you know it it took you know the the kung fu wuxia you know wire fu films from hong kong and polished that that formula up it blatantly plagiarized things like ghost in the shell which i love uh and yeah it was kind of stupid the plot didn't really make sense um the humans are definitely the villains in that movie like Mm -hmm without a doubt, like Morpheus is like a, is basically just this like jihadist terrorist, uh, mm-hmm. like religious nut. Um, the humans, you know, they nuked the sky, which would end all life on earth, uh, including their own lives without the sun. So it's like the machines were definitely like, it's, it's definitely one of those cases where like they, they made a movie and it's like, okay, well, how can I possibly root for your, your protagonist? The, yeah. Like, he's a villain. <laughs> but that being said, I I love that movie. I yeah. love that movie. And and the the Jesus, the Jesus stuff was too much, especially towards the, uh, well, the, the other sequels. movies. Well, yeah. Yeah, the, the sequels. The sequels No, the first one really had a lot of Jesus shit in it. And, and, like, they flat out told you at the very beginning, like, you're my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Like, really? You just, you just said it. Okay. <laughs> but it was handled it was handled much better than it was in the sequels. Yeah, that's the for sure. The sequels were so on the he was nose. Pretty much on a, he was pretty much on a crucifix. At the very end of the I know. Movie. I, yeah, I, oh, was like, my God. We get it. I know. We get it. We get it. <laughs> and his, 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 like, trench coat in the mm. second one looked like... You know, like some sort of religious you know garb. It was. It was just so bad. I. I, so bad. I actually enjoy watching the second. Even even on. A, I watched it recently. You know, even after. Yeah, I watched after, it about a year ago. Yeah, and it like the the visual effects don't really hold up that well, but it's. I think it's the funnest one to watch because there's just so much stuff happening in the. the yeah, there's the, a ton of action. Yeah, yeah, and that's what I enjoyed. And like, I was like, just shut up, just get to the point. Let me let me see that hot Italian chick make out. Just, yeah, you know, freeway scene. Let's do this. Yeah, but that's her that, name, yeah. Monica Monica uh, Belushi. She's yeah. still hot. Yeah, she's, <laughs> she's still a million years old. Ridiculously, ridiculously attractive. Yeah. She's she in, um, old in that movie. She was even show. old in that movie, and she still looked great. No. Yeah, uh, she's in a show right now. It's on Amazon. I've only I haven't watched all of the first season, but I really I was really enjoying it. Um, oh God, what's it called? Mozart in the Jungle, I think. Uh, she's fantastic in that show and still just stunning. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of Amazon, I, th- I think the only thing in a- the Amazon shows that, that I've seen so far that I've actually enjoyed is the tick. I, I'm not a big fan of their. Oh no. The playboy one was good with Hugh Hefner. That was good. I, I I've watched the tick and that's it. Yeah. Okay. yeah the- I, have you, have you checked out uh man in the high castle? Yeah. It was kind of boring. I kind of turned t- oh. tuned out. Really quick, Lame. I heard I heard a lot of the same thing too from other people. It's like, yeah, it's really fucking boring. Um, All right, but yeah, Philip <laughs> Philip Philip Dick adaptations are really hit or miss. <laughs> really hit. Yeah, or miss. Yeah, and they're 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 doing more Philip K. Dick uh, adaptations on Amazon as well. Mm. But they're also going to be adapting some of Neil Stevenson's work. Oh, uh, please tell like, me. I think they're snow doing. Crash. Please, I think they're doing Snow Crash. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, and yes, sorry, yeah, I, I, I was a former second lifer. <laughs> so that's okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> recovering second lifer. Um, uh, did I you ever I'm read? S- uh, I'm almost seven years sober. Woo. Did you read uh, Cryptonomicon? <laughs> no, it's awesome. Yeah, I read the only it last thing I've, year. Yeah, the only thing I've it read is, is so good. 
Yeah, the only thing I've read so far is Snow Crash. Uh, and that was really good. The ending you know, was a little bland, but it was good. Uh, overall, like it was worth it. It was worth it. <laughs> like, yeah. Everything else was so good in it. And it, it's, I I, very, it's very libertarian. Yeah, very libertarian. I've heard that, uh, that Diamond Age is even more so. Okay. Uh, well, and I mean, so is Cryptonomicon. I mean, Cryptonomicon is about like code breakers and like Nazi gold in World <laughs> War II, but also in like the late 90s, crypto anarchists like inventing Bitcoin and hmm. Uh, like it's 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 was, absolutely phenomenal. Did it come out before Bitcoin or? Did oh it yeah. Bi- oh, it was, so it it was released. Bitcoin. It was Ooh. released in like uh, 1998. Uh, so so my kind of computer science mentor. Uh, you've actually probably seen him on my wall a bunch of times. Yeah, uh, I already know who you're Perry, talking about. Yeah. Yeah, Perry Metzger. <laughs> um, so in the early 90s, Neil Stevenson was hanging out with uh, Perry and a bunch of the New York uh, crypto anarchists. These are like basically the people who invented crypto anarchy, like Tim May and, uh, and, and all, all of this stuff. And a bunch of the characters in Cryptonomicon are uh, like are pastiches of the people that were hanging out around that time. Hmm. Uh, so it's like a bunch of Perry's friends that I've interacted with <laughs> on Facebook are like the characters in Cryptonomicon. Nice. Uh, it's, it's, awesome though like super super good i just i just actually picked up um quicksilver which is like uh it's the ancestors of the characters in cryptonomicon but it takes place during like the kind of uh during the enlightenment and so it's like these enlightenment thinkers are kind of like the hackers of the time and like uh it's it's also really good so far so neil stevenson gets my seal of approval for basically everything. So bring on snow crash, bring on diamond age, bring it up, bring it all on. Yeah. I'm they they I, I honestly, no crash. I really want to know like, who, who they're going to, who they're going to do hero. Who's going to play. They hero. need to do cryptonomicon <clears throat> as like an Amazon or Netflix series. Like you could bang it out in one or two seasons and it would be absolutely phenomenal. Like there is like incredible action. There's sex. There's all sorts of intrigue. Uh, and it's it's super super smart, but uh, like people would understand it, um, and it's basically just like anarcho capitalist porn. Uh, it's it's so good, so they need to make that. Yeah, I wonder. So, they, they may uh, stress it out. Jeff they, Bezos, if you're listening, <laughs> make Cryptonomicon. Uh, I, I don't know because you know how the how Hollywood you, you know even Hollywood is Amazon's Hollywood. Um, <laughs> you know how Hollywood likes to strip out any kind of any kind of talk of anarchism at all or libertarianism yeah. at all. And the thing, the thing is, okay. So I'll say that it's not like, um, it's not explicitly talking about anarcho capitalism, but it is talking about it's not a long side night. Okay. It's no, yeah, exactly. It's not a long side night. Thank okay. God. But it's, uh, it's, <laughs> it Confirmed does deal with fact. a lot of the, <laughs> it, it deals with a lot of the uh, issues surrounding Bitcoin that are being and, and other cryptocurrencies that are being talked about in the media now. Uh, so, you know, things like tax evasion and um, all sorts of stuff. And, and the, 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 the cryptocurrency aspect of it is actually just one very small part of the story. Mm. Um, but it's, it's, it's phenomenal. I really hope they make that someday. Yeah. So that's going to be fun. We should talk about the tick because the tick is so fucking amazing. Oh, I was so good I, when I heard that. Um, uh, what's his name? Patrick Wolburn. Wolburn is that Warburton? His name? Yeah, what, yeah. He wasn't going to be uh, the tick. I was kind of bummed. At the same time, I don't know because the the live action show from the from Fox, whatever it was, a long time ago, it just mm-hmm. really fell flat. But I think it wasn't that good. <laughs> I think I think it was because the, the 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 pilot was really good. But once the show kind of, burger, I think it had like the kind of clerks problem. I don't know if you ever see the clerks yeah. uh, cartoon, you know, where the first couple episodes were really good. And then it was just like, you could tell they didn't give a shit. Um, right. I think that was really, really what happened because they got a bad time slot and they were like, we're doomed. We're just fucking just log through what we can and then just yeah. move on. I think that was the problem. So I don't know. It, it seemed like that was going to be an issue. <laughs> and then uh and the guy that they cast to play the tick, uh, which I couldn't pronounce his name even if I saw it in front of me, which I don't. What's his Peter name? Peter Serafenowitz. Serafenowitz. I had seen I would like I seen him in certain things, whatever. The thing that I recognize him the most from was this video. Star where- Wars episode one, obviously, because he was the voice of Darth Maul. He was? 
Yep. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, that's not where I recognize him the most from. <laughs> what I recognize him the most from is there's a video on YouTube, and I'll, I'll make a note right here. What's his name? Uh, whatever. Whatever wits. <laughs> Sarah Fanda wits. Yeah, Morrissey. Um, he, he did like this, I guess he got a copy or he did what, I, I don't know. Uh, he had like this, uh, the, the, the biography that Morrissey wrote about himself that was God awful. Mm-hmm. Like even people who like Morrissey, which I don't, <laughs> but even people who mm-hmm. like Morrissey was like, this is terrible. He sang it <laughs> to like some generic Morrissey music <laughs> and it was so fucking perfect because it, it actually sounds like lyrics from one of his shitty songs. <laughs> He's so funny. Like he, uh, he had a show uh, in the UK called the Peter Serafanowitz show and a lot of it is on YouTube and it is so goddamn funny. Like he does, uh, there's like a lot of original sketches and whatnot, but he also does uh like impressions of like Al Pacino and Kevin Spacey and uh, and Marlon Brando giving like um, like raping kids. Uh, no, right. <laughs> like uh, acting master classes. And there's like those sketches are so fucking funny. Uh, the guy, the guy is amazing. So like as soon as I found out he was gonna be the tick, I was like, oh, this is gonna be awesome. <laughs> I don't know, but he really doesn't seem like a kind of like a tick. I don't do you, know. After seeing it, do you not think that? Well, I haven't seen the show, so I don't know. I, oh, I, you I haven't did, watched it? No, I haven't seen it. No, you were just you just brought it. I, I haven't heard it until you just told me. Like the only thing that I'm really familiar with, like I've seen him in bit parts, like on, oh, what is it? Hitch, not Hitchhikers. Um, oh, I always, dude, no, I always say Hitchhikers when I mean Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I've seen him in stuff, stuff like that, but never like lead anything. So, dude, yeah, no. Know. Watch the Tick. It's it's. Oh, I awesome. did. No, no, no. I did see the Tick. I thought oh, you were talking okay. about his other show. Oh, no, no, <laughs> no, no. no. I, I've okay. never heard of the other show. I saw the tick. I'm like, can't wait for the next season to come out. I've already slogged through yeah. it. Like, I'm all slogged. I've enthusiastically went through the entire season like three or four times already. It's yeah. great. That was my only complaint was that it was short. Well, we're getting. Like, I, I just, getting, I wanted more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're getting the other half of the season in February. That's oh, good. I didn't know that. Yeah, I thought yeah, it was yeah. going to be like next year, like, like late. Yeah, it's only the first six oh, okay. episodes. We're getting another six uh, in February twenty eighth, I believe. Who's the guy who plays the terror? Um, Jack was, Earl he was, Haley. Yeah, he was he uh, Rorschach and Watchmen. Everything he does, he is so good, and yeah. he like, <laughs> just nails the terror. Just absolutely Ooh, nails. You got the something terror. behind your ear. <laughs> it's nothing. You got <laughs> nothing. <laughs> it was fucking awesome. <laughs> There's oh my god! Yeah, best he was, adaptation he was of the so good. Best adaptation yeah. of the terror period. Even better than the cartoon. Even better yeah, than absolutely. the cartoon. Like like hands down, yeah. best best terror. Every, I think yeah, I think t- he also did a better version. Uh, Waiting hate mail. I think he did a better version of Freddy Krueger. Like I thought I did too. I yeah. Say that. Even, <laughs> even though I thought that movie that movie was really bad. I didn't uh, think it was it bad. Was, I enjoyed it. Really enjoyed I it. it. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. I, 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 have a, to, I have a reason. Go ahead. I, 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 uh, back in the day when I was doing movie reviews on YouTube, every once in a while, I reviewed that movie. It's long, but it's long since been deleted. Mm. Uh, but that movie, I remember the first like 30 minutes, you're following this blonde girl, and I was like, this is the protagonist. And then she gets killed. And I was like, I don't care about anyone in this movie now. <laughs> Like at all. I was like, I thought that was the main character and it's not. But yeah, no, I agree. He was super creepy as, as Kruger. Yeah. I, I actually liked his adaptation of Kruger more than that. Was it? What's his name? Fucking excuse England. Me. England. Yeah, something England. Something. Yeah. yeah. Um, or London. I, I was know. never really a huge fan of those, of the, of the Kruger movies yeah. anyway, but well, uh, see, I didn't, I didn't grow up with Kruger. I wasn't allowed to watch that stuff. So when I did see horror yeah, movies, was it wasn't until later. So I didn't have a nostalgic feel for it. I thought that a lot of people who really didn't like the new one was going to be upset because it's not the same. And yeah, like I enjoyed uh, Evil Dead. I probably oh yeah, I, the 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 recent Evil Dead movie. Yeah, I, I yeah, not I really the enjoyed Evil that. Dead. Evil Dead. That's how you know that the difference is when someone says Evil Dead, yeah. they're not talking about the original. Like so, I I, enjoy, I probably wouldn't say I enjoyed the the newer one 
more because it, as an actual horror film, I enjoy the first one better as a comedy. <laughs> so it's really kind of yeah. you got to pick and choose. So I didn't I really know. have I a mean, nostalgia the, the new for one, The thing is like the new one had still had like comedic aspects yeah. to it, but it was it was creepy. Yeah. It was really creepy and like Way more I, creepy. I really yeah, I really, really enjoyed it. I, th- I thought they did a fantastic job. That, that's a show I haven't watched yet, though. Uh, Ash versus the Evil Dead. I haven't um, seen it yet. I heard it's great, though. Yeah, but yeah, apparently it's fantastic. Uh, Lucy Lawless is on it, um, who I adore. <laughs> uh, and yeah, that's I yeah I, I totally for, I'm gonna have to have to get a get a hold of that movie though because I I really enjoyed that in the theaters. Yeah. I didn't see it in the theater. I saw it after it came out and I was like, holy shit, why didn't I see this? Yeah. <laughs> I think I was listening was, to other people say thing, bad things about it. Yeah, the thing is, I knew everyone was going to hate it just because it, it didn't have Bruce Campbell. Yeah. He does have a like two second cameo after the credits. It's literally like he just looks at the screen Did and he goes, really? groovy. Ah, like, I got to watch movie. it again. It, yeah, it has no <laughs> connection to the movie whatsoever. Okay. He just like looks at the camera really quickly. It's groovy or mm. something stupid, you know. Uh, but it was, uh, I yeah, I loved that. I think Jared Leto was in that movie. Oh, um, okay. I can't remember if it's him. I think it is though. Yeah, a lot. I'll of, look it up. I later. think it was just a lot of nobodies in that. I think there, I think there yeah. was someone that looked like J- Jared Leto, but I don't think it was. I'm gonna look this up right now because okay. I think it was him. Yeah, um, um, I I really enjoyed it. I, I hope they don't make sequels of it because because the sequels were are supposed to be comedy. That's when they were realized like, oh, we made a really campy, funny movie yeah. unintentionally. Let's just go with it, and that's why they were great. Yeah, <laughs> they, was, once it became self aware, there's no real self awareness aspect that could come out of uh, the evil, the new relaunch. So was it Jared Leto? Uh, I'm trying to find the IMDb right now. New York internet must be slow. <laughs> no, my Google foo is just bad. <laughs> Google foo. Yeah, and, you and get I'm on holding duck, the duck microphone. Go, man. Come on. Get I'm holding the microphone in my hand right now, oh. and my keyboard, I use a, a Kinesis Advantage 2 now, which is this like super ergon- uh, ergonomic keyboard. And uh, never leaves me bored. So yeah. it's the keyboard is split by hand, so it's, it's, much, mm. it's, it's much harder to type one-handed. Um where the hell? Just show me the fucking new one. How do you cyber? I do. <laughs> very, very carefully. It's weird. It's weird. <laughs> uh, oh, Jesus. Let's see, we're, we already, are we well, already let's, ha- let's move on from me Googling. Yeah, this is not working out well. <laughs> well. Yeah, we'll have we'll have Bipcock Google Google it for you. Um, <laughs> uh, where was I? Oh, yeah. We already had a re, we already had a re uh uh or what is it a reboot of of Army of Darkness. It was called Oz the Wonderful and Powerful or whatever. Right. We already had that and right. it was not good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I didn't and I did not see it. Yeah. Uh it was not Jared Leto. But it, it looked not like him. Okay. Yeah. That's what I thought because these guys looked like I don't think I think everybody was saying like these are were nobody actors. Yeah. Yeah. They were all fresh. Man, faces. he looks like him though. Holy crap. Yeah. But yeah, the Evil Dead was great. <laughs> the Evil Dead was great. Yeah. Oh shit! What was the other thing we were supposed to talk about? Uh, so we got Star Wars, and then we just drifted off into talking about <laughs> about other yeah. I, and I, books. <laughs> I had show prep in my head, and then I forgot it. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great podcast. <laughs> I know it's going well, and but you know people still go like, oh, that was epi- that mm-hmm. was epic, because we didn't have show prep for the other one either. So whatever. No, not really. Yeah, it was just yeah. that Donna Brazil thing happened that oh, day, Ster- which was yeah. Curious. I remember you wanted to talk about Sterner. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. we were talking about the uh, the Icono Sass uh, episode with James Weeks that you didn't listen to. I was like, I thought that you I were going to listen to it and then want to talk about all the stuff that they got wrong in it. <laughs> so right. yeah, um, yeah, you 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 wanted to know about St- Sterner and how I'd be kind of. I, I'm not a Sternerite. I guess that's the term that everybody's using now, unironically, mm-hmm. which is sad. Uh, no, I'm not an egoist, but I do have like some egoist leanings. I probably right. would call myself like a psychological egoist. Um, so yeah, Max Sterner. Um, yeah, he, he he. People think that he's like some crazy like communist guy, and he really wasn't. In fact, he 
triggered the living shit out of Marx. Like, this is how bad Stirner pissed Marx off. Marx wrote an entire book <laughs> about how 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 <laughs> how bad like uh, Max Stirner was uh, because like how dare he call his stuff a spook and you know if we get rid of all the spooks you know blood will be raining in the streets and Engels actually wrote a poem about <laughs> about Max Stirner was like gonna drink yeah, it's a good thing that didn't happen when we got streets. communism instead yeah. <laughs> And so, like, what the whole thing with Max Stirner was is he was kind of in the group of the die free, die free, and uh, you know the, the the free minds or whatever they call them back in the day, and used to hang out with Marx and Engels and Feuerbach and all those people, and he was like a protege of of Hegel, but he was also a critic of Hegel. He was basically a critic of every everything, everything. He was a critic of. Um, he he thought that that every kind of ethical system was a spook. It was a, a you know, a phantasm of the mind. Uh, right. But at the end of the day, what really mattered was the ego, the the personal ego. And, and he influenced a lot of Ayn Rand. Like Ayn Rand was pretty much like a mm-hmm. protege of, of Sterner, but you know, she, fa- she had a lot of spooks of her own, but she, you know, she was just like, this is, this is, this is what's empirically true. <laughs> so I'm, I'm mm-hmm. like, I'm a little bit more sympathetic to Ayn Rand than I am Sterner, but I really kind of respect how he kind of really just said like, no, this is all just shit that's fucking in your head. Like, and you have to treat it as such and you can have preferences or whatever. But at the end of the day, like these are just spooks. And he, and he, 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 he just disregarded everything, even up to and including like property and, and uh, uh, contracts and, uh, you know, economic systems, like all of them, they're all just spooks mm-hmm. in your head. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that, that, and people would like, he, he said that like he was, he wasn't against socialism. Uh, he, he, he had problems with liberalism, you know, it, because he's an 18th century guy. So, you know, all right. that stuff. <clears throat> But he, what he was really against is like sacred forms of those, like people who who kind of built it up in this religion, you know, and, you know, subject. He was really against people like, you know, holding things above their own ego, above their own self. And that's what he really mm-hmm. was was talking about most of the time. Like, yeah, you could, if you want to have socialism, that's fine. You know, if you, you want to have liberalism, whatever. He's like, but don't make that a thing that's above your own, like a cause that's higher than your own, because then that's a spook and that's, you know, you shouldn't do that. You should, if it's, I can, if I it's, can see why this appeals to internet edge lords. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and he, he, his, his view of property was might rate makes right, which I guess is, I guess almost true empirically. Uh, no, that's a spook though. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's literally a spook. Might, might is. Yeah, might makes right. You're you're drawing an ought from an is there. So spook. Well, he, sorry. Well, no, no, no. It's it's not an. Sorry, <laughs> Sterner blown up. No, but not really. Um, because he doesn't really say might is right. He just kind of says like if you, you, what is your property is what you make you your own property. So you're 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 my now you're now my property now, Matt. You're my property. Spook. <laughs> yeah, that's that's definitely a spook. So there's a lot of interesting stuff. There's a lot of stuff that I disagree with. Like the whole idea that you just get rid of contracts just wholesale just because it's a duty that you're imposing on yourself. I'm mean, well, if that's what you're that's what's in your ego, why not? So that's what one thing I disagree with them. And and on top of that, like all the stuff that I have in front of me, like the computer, the microphone, um my 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 new vapor thing. Cause I'm trying to spend less money on hookah. Uh, <laughs> my new vapor or not my, this is my old vaporizer. You vape. Uh, I vape, bro. You vape, bro. Yeah, vape t- nation. <laughs> er- ergo. I take it in the butt. <laughs> no. Um, yeah. Vape nation. Y'all. But all this stuff is not possible unless you have c- contractual obligations. It's just not possible. Everything that's in your computer is made by like all different people around the country, around the world, rather, and they're yeah, contracting complex with each other agreements yeah. to to cooperate, yeah. with one another, yeah. And if you and if you refuse to cooperate, you you constantly you know uh, renege on on deals and and contracts and whatnot. No one will cooperate with you, yeah. and you will be a social kind of pariah and outcast. Probably end up going to jail. <laughs> um, so it's not like the, like nobody who who says that like contracts are are like spooks and made up nobody actually believes that or or would act on that because it would be their doom it well, would just be their doom I, I well let's see like 
I, I agree, but I, I don't think it's very pragmatic. <laughs> so I don't, I don't think like it's, it's possible to live in a world where everybody's just like, Oh, everything's my property. Um, you know, everything is, everything is a spook. Therefore, if it's, if it's a spook, I'm just not going to adhere to it at all. I don't even think Sterner, even even the things that he says, he's like, don't even follow me because you know, this is, this is what I consider my own. So he's like Jesus. Yeah. No, he's, he wouldn't, he would be like, don't follow me. Uh, This is what I want. (laughs) Like, this is the, is what he's saying. Like, this is all my preference. God, this guy sounds terrible. (laughs) He has problems for sure, <laughs> for sure. But there's a lot of things that I get a lot of value from, you know. And and apparently Ayn Rand did too. So uh, I, mm-hmm. that's why I kind of consider myself post post left or post not post left post right. Uh, kind of in the same vein, how they the left would take Sterner to kind of critique the left. I do the same thing to critique the right as well. But I still. Mm-hmm. I still like my spooks, right? I still like my property rights. I still like my property norms, rather. Uh, I still like all that stuff. Yeah, Pro- property's not like it's not a spook, though. It's 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 a biological imperative. It's territory. Mm-hmm. Man, man is a territorial animal, and you know when the, the the couple of handful of times that people have tried to deny that uh, ended in horrible exactly. nightmare societies and mass graves which is so why i like, like my preferences with property norms and all that contracts and all that stuff yeah I, but but my point is like it's a real thing like it's a it's a thing that that you know is is a part of of our reality it's not like some sort of like spiritual or metaphysical thing it's it's literally like property is is how we is is how we live and avoid conflict well, property. Yeah. That, well, that, that he, is real. well, he doesn't deny property. What he denies is property rights as as a as a as a construct. That's what he would. That's what he would have problems with. He would say that like you could have property, and you take property by taking things by by your might. Then that's yours. Yeah. Well, that's ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, that that no no. You see, that's not. See, that doesn't. That's not property though. That's like property. It, you know, includes the word proper where we're talking about proper behavior. And if you're, well, anarchy means like, no rules. So <laughs> no, but, I, but what I'm trying to say though, is I that, know, but I'm saying like, I'm not a big fan of arguments from ep- ep- <laughs> etymology, but go ahead. <laughs> well, that, well, okay. fair. <laughs> That's all I'm saying with that. Yeah. Totally, totally fair. Totally okay. fair. Um, but what I'm saying though, is, is that like, rules and like norms exist to alleviate and and mitigate conflict. Yeah. Like that that's the perp that's their purpose. Yeah. So like I don't know so if he's saying like, oh well, you know, that that this this is a spook, this does you know, this isn't real, it doesn't exist, or uh not or he's not saying that it doesn't exist, but there's not like a justification for it, then it's like, okay, well then you're just left with conflict. Right. It's it's like if I don't you think prefer he cares, to though. not live in I know and I'm saying that, that <laughs> makes him garbage. <laughs> well, and I don't believe him because he obviously like well, I don't no, think he was just some psychopathic murderer taking whatever he wanted. And, no, no, he he wouldn't. Blah, he was blah, a blah. very he was a very peaceful like very peaceful guy. Like he would he would not be in in favor of he would he would think that if you know if he had his way his own way, uh, people wouldn't necessarily follow him, and he would he would say like don't like this is my personal ego this is my movement and if Man, you try, you're not selling yeah. me on this guy i'm not so i'm not <laughs> trying to sell you on this guy it's an it's an interesting read and i think he brings up a lot of interesting points and i think he brings up a lot of fair criticisms but at the same time it's like okay but i'm still gonna want to live in a world with capitalism and trade and liberalism how he defined it i want to live with all that stuff but that's only right. because that's that's in the interest of myself my ego like my ego is is what I hold more than everything else. Like I don't. At the end of the day, like it doesn't really matter what happens after I die because the world ends mm-hmm. when the universe ends when I die. When I'm dead, right. it doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> it's, just, it's just all going to go black. Well, it doesn't matter to you. Yeah. And he would have preferences of his own. But what he's saying at the end of the day is like none of that really matters. What really matters is like your own personal ego. So if you if you if you find value in certain things, great, pursue those. But just understand that that you know a lot of that shit's just in your head. Cool. Hmm. That's the way I, I perceive it. 
Okay. Yeah. I, I don't think this like. It sounds like a real shit bag. But... <laughs> <laughs> I know you're not trying to sell me on it, but. I'm well, just maybe you should record. help out with the audio book that I'm building. I don't think I like this guy. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> There's a lot of interesting stuff. It's worth a read. It's a lot of it's, and I mean, Tom Woods did an episode. Was I think it was yesterday? He did an episode, and they were talking about the kind of old anarchists, and he went from mm-hmm. you know Perdone and uh, uh, another terrible, yeah, pr- yeah. garbage person <laughs> with garbage thoughts. <laughs> oh, hold on, I'm gonna I get really, to that. I I'm cannot, gonna... I cannot stand Proudhon. I cannot stand Proudhon, and I hate uh, even worse than Proudhon are the people who like him and defend him. He's mm. garbage. Also, I will say he was he, an anti-Semite. Okay, of course. I, I, <laughs> there is one thing that I will defend from him, and I think it's because a lot of people take him out of context, even people who like him take him out of context a lot, and that is whole, like, his when he said property is theft. I think that was him, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. So property yeah, is theft. Pretty- yeah, what he meant at the time was not like you can't own a toothbrush, but... And it was also in very much you had to understand the context of what the world that he lived in was was basically property was the state owning things, you know, like land and, 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 and basically people and all that stuff. And they were basically taking it from the peasants. And, yeah, yeah, like the enclosure movement. And he was saying like, like property is theft because all the property was owned by the king. <laughs> so that's what he meant. Like, yeah. The, and then like later on, he was like, oh, no, no, that's not what I meant. I don't, I don't mean like people owning things. And I don't yeah, agree with him. That, on other but, that's, yeah. but that's what all of his followers have taken in. Exactly. Taken from him. <laughs> and the, the, the worst thing about Proudhon, exactly. though, is that even the people who like Proudhon cannot agree on what he meant about anything. Same thing. With, oh, dude, you. you so it's so it's it's just like well, it maybe it's Sterner. because he was a completely <laughs> muddled thinker and didn't actually have anything of value to say. Well, yeah, people do the same thing with Sterner. Like, I'm sure you've seen Sterner memes with Sterner holding an AK-47, which is like mm-hmm. y- you haven't read Sterner. At least you don't understand it or something. But at the same time, to be fair, like he 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 had this really weird way of writing because he writes a lot. Like he 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 was really good at like uh, what's the like what I do satire satire yeah, yeah so a lot of the times like people take what he said like at face value not realizing like oh he's 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 speaking you know he's talking in satire and I do a lot of the same things and I've had people like because I wrote I don't know if you remember well, you're that on art- my mind now because I thought you, you were just a psychopath <laughs> no 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 and the, there everything was, that you some of that is, some of that stuff really, was no some of that stuff was that legit you- up until this moment, I've been taking everything <laughs> that you've ever said at face value. Oh, okay. So you thought that I you was... You have completely blown my mind. Oh, shit. But, a lot, <laughs> but I don't think a lot of the translators understood, who translated his work from German, understood a lot of that satire. And there was a lot right. of... He had like a lot of... Um, or And he would also use people's arguments against them. Against like using the same like logical train that they're using to show that like... You know, you can you can argue for the reverse position using the same line of reasoning. For example, right. Chase Rachel's had that whole line of reasoning that you know he was going to exclude people from you know this new or the the previously owned state property by using trust like public trust, and people would have a stake in the trust based on how much aggression they have experienced from the state through theft, through threats of uh, violence and actual violence. But at the same mm-hmm. time, you're like, okay, so you're using that as a justification to exclude immigrants to come into the country and use the property or the property of the of this trust, highways, bridges, et cetera. Well, who are the people that are probably experiencing the most amount of violence from the U.S. government? Not Americans. A lot of them are from overseas yeah, no, that are being like bombed. Yeah, Yemen. Yeah, exactly. The Mexicans yeah. in Mexico who are being affected by NAFTA and the, and the corn subsidies. And and by the drug war, yeah, <laughs> and all sort, yeah, the so the in- yeah, like so that's kind of like and how I did that, like I would say like, I, and but instead of me putting it in that frame, I was just like saying, using the exact argument to say like let all the immigrants in, like and yeah. bring them in because they have a right to to not only use the property, they should also be flown over here to use it. I'm not actually saying that, but by me using right, that no, as a point, no, no, I, yeah, I got it. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of people would like see that he's using that point and go like, "Aha!" But he's like, "No, he's making a point against Hegel." <laughs> like people don't realize what he's talking about, yeah. and it's kind of yeah, hard no, to totally. distinguish it, especially with the translations. 
So, yeah, that's yeah. actually that's something I've I've heard about, uh, and I haven't read. Um, I've read one like one excerpt of Foucault for. I can't remember what it was. Oh no, no, it was for that Mises Academy course on the prison state that I took. Um, you went to a Mises like, Academy. Uh, what a uh, nerd! Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, ahead. totally. It was it was <laughs> when they had their their uh, online course and oh, Dan okay. D'Amico. Uh, it was about the prison state. It was fascinating. Uh, but like uh, Foucault and Derrida, like uh, the like these French writers uh, have like all of the American postmodernists oh, okay. are uh, are going off of these English translations, which don't map one-to-one apparently with what they wrote anyway, yeah. they were still terrible. <laughs> it's not to say that they weren't terrible, but it's like you're, you have these people who are like supposed to be experts on, on these thinkers that, you know, aren't even reading in like the original words. They're, they're like crappy translations. Yeah. Um, but I can't say if there's any validity to that or not. Uh, Cause I don't read French and I, don't read Foucault. <laughs> so, exactly. so I, I can't actually say that with any certainty, but that that's something that I have heard. Yeah. So like I have a, uh, the spook Craig flag that I made, which looks like the kind of Kekistan flag, but it's got like yeah. an anti or ghostbusters theme, <laughs> a ghostbusters logo instead of like, right. Which also looks like a, a Nazi battle flag. Yeah. If I'm, yeah, yeah. If I'm correct. Yeah. So I, I, I posted this in a Sterner group, Sterner spook posting, and like uh-huh. I had people come on there and go like, this guy is an ANCAP. He's full of spooks and blah, blah, blah. And I'm looking at him. I'm like, dude, you're the avatar, your avatar that you're using right now with a giant like thing had a big thing on it that said like anarchy, property is theft. And I'm like, Sterner would call that a spook too, dude. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Welcome so to Spook Town. Most people who re, who call themselves egoists are horrible. There's a there's some really interesting kind of people like with the Union of Egoists that are really cool and they they do a lot of they do a podcast. It's actually really cool too. Like they 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 get it. <laughs> like a lot of the like mm-hmm. Satanists who are who who are egoists. I think that they kind of get it too. But most right. of the people who pass around and make those Sterner memes are just fucking god awful idiots <laughs> yeah they're just like these like yeah I think that's the yeah. term that you would use yeah 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 you don't understand drooling <laughs> yeah so yep that's 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 where I, that's where i'm at that's the whole post right thing it's just it's it's i i i'm i'm because i'm a consequentialist like i don't really care about the, the 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 logical constructs like that's fine and great how do they work in reality it seems it seems according to the evidence anytime that individually these these kind of things are left to the market or left to people freely it seems to do well uh and i I don't (laughs) and and, you know that's fine to have the praxeology stuff that's great but i want to test it against the real world and this is where we're going to fight but (laughs) i want to test it against the real world uh and it seems as though that it it works out great so fine i'm all for it like i I still listen to austrians i still find a lot of value Mm -hmm. in what they do but i'm just willing to be that like all right let's test it against reality all right, it works. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't think the Austrians are against empiricism as much as people would like you to think. No, no, they don't. They're not. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, uh, I'm, I think like consequences, add, like they matter for sure. Uh, like I, I don't, I don't see there being really a dichotomy between morality and consequentialism. Um, but I don't know. I'm also not super into philosophy. Like I have, <laughs> I have, I have strong opinions weekly held <laughs> on, on it. Seems legit. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I, I consider myself, I, even though a, I butchered kind of a, Sterner uh, trying to explain it, but yeah. <laughs> well, I didn't help. <laughs> yeah. You weren't helping uh, interjecting. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, well, hold on. Now I got to go back and explain this. Sterner, whole thing. never heard of him. No. Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> he's yeah, worth a I, read. Uh, I will say he's worth a read. I would consider myself like a soft objectivist. I think that Rand was basically right about big picture stuff. Like, you know, it's, you should pursue happiness and capitalism and, and property rights and, and all those things. But mm. like, I'm not, uh, not for smoking. A, hmm? not no, for smoking. I'm not. I really used to be for smoking a lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I used to smoke so many cigarettes. Um, but you don't, you the, don't use uh, the same you don't use the same vapor brand that I do. It symbolizes right. 
the vapor of the mind. Yeah, one of us, one of us is definitely you know a death worshiper here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, anti mind, anti reason. Um, but yeah, it's like I think the things where Rand was was like clearly wrong was stuff that's not important, like the whole like smoking stuff. It's like who cares? That's that's completely not important. Yeah. Um, I I Her think sex that cult, would, don't care. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Her cats. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> Should we talk about her cats? <laughs> Can we I talk actually don't know about her cats. What? So she was a crazy cat lady. Like and that makes sense. Like and, and not and not like oh she, she had a lot of cats. It was not that. It was like she had cats, but she like didn't neuter them or spayed them. Oh yeah, no, no, no. I did know this. Yeah, <laughs> okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> because she thought it was like uh some sort of like you know, denying them their their, their pleasure. Yeah, their their natural pleasure. Where it's like, it isn't like no, like, but cats don't get pleasure from sex. Cats it's don't get very pleasure painful. from sex. It's, it's like painful. horrible, painful. It's like rape every single time. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> but they just have the need to do it because like their 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 hormones are just out of control. Yeah, and they have barbs on their penises that not only hurts yeah. the female but it also hurts the male too. <laughs> like oh it's my just God. it's just no good all around. No, yeah, no I, did, I did actually know this about Rand. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, I remember like because like I have a cat and she's one of those cats. You know, some cats like to be like swatted on the butt, right? And someone mm-hmm. was like, "I think that's like a sexual thing." I'm like, "No, <laughs> there's nothing good <laughs> about sex for cats. They don't like yeah. any of it. Yeah, none of it. It's not a sexual thing. <laughs> just, yeah, I think it's just just releasing what is it." Uh, endorphins that's it's kind of like eating spicy food kind of for yeah. humans yeah yeah so rand was crazy but she had a lot of really good stuff and i i, I like rand more than i like sterner but I, I respect a lot of what sterner kind of brought into it and i think his right. kind of critiques were, were really important of things for me um even even what he would critique of rand i think are also important too <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah because rand had a lot of problems a lot of problems yeah rand, rand had problems yeah. for sure Everybody, everybody does. There's nobody. Nobody's perfect. Yeah. So what else were we talking about? Oh yeah, tankies. <laughs> Should we talk about tankies? Yeah. Explain this again. You, know, you never heard of the term tankies? Wow. Yeah. No. Yeah. I was like, oh yeah, d- I'm just joking around because MK and uh, James Weeks, who are also Lulberts, were really kind of pushing a lot of like lefty kind of crap. <laughs> and I was like, That's yeah, they're great. a bunch of tankies just joking around. You're like, what the fuck is that? Yeah, I was like, I don't know what the fuck a tanky yeah, is. Yeah, tank, tank, <laughs> tankies are are like the really authoritarian communists, like state communists, Maoists, oh, Stalinists. Great. <laughs> yeah, they're not really tankies, but I was just, <laughs> I was like, you never heard that term <laughs> okay. before. Yeah, 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 yeah. Commies are bad, <laughs> just horrible, awful people. There's literally nothing worse than communism. Like, there is nothing worse than communism. I'm thinking about it. I'm, tr- I'm trying to, I'm trying to think. That's the thing. Like yeah, you're I'm, thinking and you're, you're coming up really blank. Think, like, yeah, nothing. I was just like, like if the, you, f- the first thing that popped in my mind, but I think it's just because I'm American was Nazism. And I was like, no, 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 <laughs> that was yeah. really bad. And, and but a, people I don't ate, remember who said this. I don't remember. And the who Holocausts said this. were smaller. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I, that's, I don't, I don't remember who said this, but it was a great quote where it's like, when you're comparing the Nazis and the communists, uh, it's like there is a certain uh, level of evil. There's a certain scale of evil acts where it's like comparisons stop even mattering at that point. Mm-hmm. Uh, like the uh, the the evil perpetrated by the Nazis was so horrendous as uh, as was the communists that it's like I don't even think we need to really pick you know who was worse. But the the point in bringing up why like always saying communism was this just catastrophe was because is because the, uh, the left still has a complete soft spot for them and will not even admit that, you know, over like nearly a hundred million people perished unnecessarily uh, in deliberate acts of, of evil yeah, under it, communist regimes in the 20th century. It like really, it's just this, it really wasn't just like, Oh, accidental famines. And then it got really bad because of socialism. They're like, no, they had, they had concentration oh, like the, camps and they had extermination camps and they were doing the exact same things as the Nazis and they were even anti-Semite like all like, yeah. like they were going like killing Jews like even up until like later on like um 
one of the guys I uh, like really like listening to is uh, Gary Vaynerchuk, and he talked about his history because mm-hmm. he was born in Soviet Russia. Well, no, I think. Oh he was, yeah, no, that guy's uh, that entrepreneur. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That guy's awesome. Yeah, and he was talking about how how the state was like trying to get rid of Jews, but they couldn't do Holocausts anymore because it was the modern age. So what they were doing was they were s- trading Israel Jews for wheat <laughs> like, because yeah. they needed food. Yeah, yeah. They st- even up to that last moments, they were still had a lot of anti-Semitic tones to them. Oh, for sure. Yeah, and that, I mean, a lot of that has has stayed in in uh, those former communist territories, like mm-hmm. uh, the Ukraine. Like, uh, it's I I can't remember. I think it was Michael Malice was talking about his hometown in Russia. Um, I don't think he went to visit. I think his sister went to visit, and there was there is a restaurant there called Jew Style. And you're encouraged to haggle over the prices of <laughs> wow. on the menu. Yeah. And this is just like, this is a modern place that exists in the real world right now. Um, like they're like the communists were deeply, deeply anti-Semitic. Yeah. Um, and I think the, the mistake that the, uh, there's, well, there's several mistakes here that the, that, uh, liberals have made over the ages is saying, well, it's like, okay, the the Nazis though had an explicit policy and desire to kill and harm certain people, whereas communism, you know, at least sounds like a, a like a like a moral and decent idea, um, and I think that that is a complete that's completely false. Like the the communists, uh, first of all, these people who who ran these regimes and you know had the revolutions. These were not good people with good ideas and and had just love for the worker in their heart. That that's not it at all. These were like terrible psychopathic evil murderers, like the absolute worst people in the world uh being put into the worst possible circumstances where they could rise to absolute power. So this there this the narrative that communism is somehow like at least the intentions weren't as bad. I think that is mm-hmm. that is completely false uh to begin with these these people were butchers <laughs> and second of all the intentions of communism if you know anything about communism about you know expropriating all the property owners state ownership and management of of production and everything that on its face is evil and i get that people don't really understand or see that simply because they don't know much about economics or you know have any semblance of any sort of coherent rational morality uh where uh the the, they just thinking the idea that the you know that ending private property is a good somehow that that is good that is well intentioned i think is just absolutely abominable and man if you look into what went on in communist regimes even just a little bit you don't have to look far before you start finding things like like in china like underground black markets of people selling human flesh for food. Yeah. Like this, the, just the scale and the, the depravity that came out of those, those regimes. It was, it was living, it was a living nightmare, a living nightmare for almost a hundred years. Yeah. Like, um, even today, like there's black market, like organ ring, like organs. Cause I remember there was some special I was watching on TV where they were talking about this guy and he didn't even want his face to be shown. And he went, uh, I think he went to China and he, because he needed a liver transplant, and the liver was the line was too long, and he he wasn't mm-hmm. like eligible for, you know, getting ahead of the line because he's not like a kid or anything. Right. So like he had to go to China, and he was like, okay, cool, like whatever, I'll just skip to this free market, whatever. And he goes there, and he gets Man, the liver, and comes back. All the breaks. Yeah, and then, <laughs> and then he comes back, and he real <laughs> he finds out that like over there they just kill people to sell li- sell their organs. Right. The, the state does. And he was like devastated and he was like spending his whole life trying to like get this, to, this Make practice to stop, but he didn't yeah. want to show his face because he was so embarrassed that by the fact that he did it, you know? Right. And it was just like, oh man, it's terrible. And like, even today, like the truffle market, I don't know if you need to know anything about the truffles. Uh, I mean, they taste delicious. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. They're fungus that grows underground. The only way to find them is either find pigs that'll sniff them out. Yeah. Or train dogs to do it, and now they do train dogs because the pigs will eat them. Um, so they the yeah, truffles, they, yeah. But what China yeah. did was like, oh, these are expensive. Well, they grow here. We'll just 
have our have our slave population go and go out and just dig them out you know out, just right. just till all the land for them and they produce like right. this crap crap truffles that are that taste terrible <laughs> and they flood the market with cheap nasty like counterfeit truffles almost and you know it's basically produced by by slavery and then i'm supposed to feel bad because like bad mouse production goes around the uk and goes like oh look at this house they had slaves here look at this house they had slaves here this is all about capitalism I'm like dude there are literal slaves today under even l- more liberalized uh yeah. you know uh communist regimes that are slave labor slaves there's, there's, yeah literal slaves and- and thanks to Hillary Clinton, there are now African slaves being sold into chattel slavery mm. in Libya. Thank you, Hillary, Thank for you, that. Hillary. What well, a smart foreign policy victory that was. And to be fair about Trump, he, he was praising it at the time. <laughs> oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. <laughs> again, I was, this is I was the, always it's a, it's against a commie, Libya. It's a commies and Nazis thing. They're yeah. both terrible. And, well, you know, I wouldn't call Trump a Nazi, but yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. What I'm saying is that it's like, you know, acute, you know, criticizing communism does not mean you favor Nazism mm-hmm. and vice versa. And it's the same thing with, with Hillary and Trump. It's, it's like criticizing one does not mean you support or are sympathetic to the other. Um, so for, for sure, Trump, Trump is, is, is evil and garbage and all of all, <laughs> every politician should be tarred and feathered and all of possibly them, yeah. shot, shot out of a cannon into space. <laughs> like the human bullet, bringing it back to yeah. tick. No, uh, exactly. <laughs> bring it to bring it to bring this back to what's important. <laughs> the tick. Yeah. I, I, you know what? I think the tick maybe have a lot of libertarian themes. I think maybe intentionally. Cause if you think maybe. about it, yeah. Cause you think about it, like all these kind of, uh, superheroes, and I'm sure there's going to be more that are coming around because that's the way the city worked. And 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 all of the incantations of the tick was there's mm-hmm. a bu- there's a there's an overabundance of superheroes. Yeah, <laughs> and they're, and they're all terrible. And so that's why they're all like struggling to make rent. <laughs> yeah, it's like actors, you know. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but they did more good anyway than the police did, or the city, and the city didn't care. And on top of that, like anytime they were talking about like, oh, we need to bring him to Aegis, which is like this government bureaucracy that manages all the superheroes. Oh, yeah. That was great. (laughs) It's just this like closed down DMV. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And even the guy was like, you're going to bring them to the to Aegis. You're going to be buried under piles of paperwork. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, Like, what are you doing? (laughs) They're not going to help you. And when they got there, they (laughs) they didn't help them. (laughs) Yeah. All right. So, anyways, um, so I, I was listening to uh, the Freedom Fiends, which I was just, I was just there to just catch up on some drama uh, <laughs> because there was some drama that happened with the Freedom Fiends and some mm-hmm. co-hosts. And like one of the things that 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 Michael Dean said was he was like he's like I just I, he's like I I only want like like you know people who understand that you know the left is absolutely terrible and you know we need to throw helicopters at a, uh, or commies out of helicopters because he's like they don't understand like people don't understand how like the left want you actually dead and I'm sitting there going like well, at the same time you're talking about you know I'm sure he's talking about, ironically throwing commies out of helicopters like that's literally <laughs> the same thing uh but uh-huh. I, I get that he was joking but there's a lot of people who are not joking about throwing commies out of helicopters sure yeah yeah no i i agree uh there's there's uh there's a clear difference when someone's joking about murdering someone and someone's you know serious yeah. about murdering someone uh and we've we've come across both on the internet for sure <laughs> yeah yeah, like there. I mean, when it comes, like that's why I, I'm not a big fan of left and right. Like I use post right, and it's, but at, at the same time, it's telling you I'm also not a right. I don't consider myself right. Um, yeah, and I would say like the degree to which the left and right have uh, become more tribal than they were previously, mm-hmm. um, or at least it seems more vicious. Uh, like they've gotten, both sides have gotten much much worse. Yeah. Like much much worse. And I keep like, I think, people, yeah, like we thought things were divided under the Obama administration. But I thought things holy, were divided under uh, Bush. Bush, yeah, <laughs> yeah like, for sure. Like you would think, like man, I, would, it can't I opine get for those days. This. Like yeah. oh, just wait. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, and so people there are like completely insane. They can't. Both the left and the right view the other side as being like a monolith as well. Like it's just one coherent, 
like the left is this one set of ideas and they are united in trying to destroy us. And, and in a certain respect, that's true for both sides. Like the, nobody is giving any quarter to Trump uh, on the left and nobody is giving any quarter to, you know, Hillary Clinton on the right. Mm -hmm. Um, But the left, both the left and the right are, are big collections of various factions and groups that all hate each other. Yeah. And all and even on the extreme ends, want to kill each other ideologically, and want to kill each other. Yeah, yeah. What, within their own, <laughs> within the right, and within the left. Yeah, not just not just across the aisle. <laughs> yeah, because the tankies want were going around killing off and what they viewed as imperialists and uh, you know the bourgeoisie. Like they they thought they were the the, the problem, and they would go and mm-hmm. execute them. And the Nazis were also killing off communists and Jehovah's Witnesses, whatever, yeah. <laughs> whatever that was about. <laughs> <laughs> I guess they are pretty annoying when they when they knock mm-hmm. at your door early in the morning. But come on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I mean, like, yeah, like, you know, they, when I when people start talking about like, oh, I'm on the right or I'm on the left. The only thing that I'm hearing is this is my particular flavor of authoritarianism. Because that's yeah. what that's what they are. Like if you if you look back, you know, except for the early days of when the left right kind of thing came about, because the left was they were basically what we would call liberals or classical yeah, liber- classical liberals, classical, mm-hmm. classical liberals now. But it wasn't until like after Hegel that it started to be becoming like, oh no, there was a left Hegelians and the right Hegelians, and that's how we understand the left and the right now. And right. you know the, the the Republicans always talk about like oh we want small government we want this and that I'm like no you don't no they <laughs> no. Re- they really really don't they really they really don't. really really don't and um, we're we're learning this lesson all over again with Trump it's like what happened to small government you know sure he's done some things in deregulation and Obamacare but at mm-hmm. the same time he still re- he still hasn't decreased the war he, you know and he was he was running on a on a position of non interventionism. You know the kind yeah. of Buchanan, Buchananite kind of view of foreign policy, not the Ron Paul. Yeah, but- and and they're for sure still doing like you know they've they've ramped up the 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 drone bombings overseas for like definitely. And there's all sorts of stuff going on in Africa now, uh, which is which is crazy. But um, I will say that I I do think that We're in gonna terms find of Coney. like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but, Tony, but 2017. Like, Go ahead. <laughs> Syria, Trump actually was rather restrained with Syria, uh, and it didn't look like he was going to be for a while, <laughs> which was very scary. Um, but it it does like staying hands off of that. Um, that is in one respect where I can see where he was less hawkish than than Hillary. Yeah. Um, but but you're completely right in in the in the other respect. There's no. Like he was not the thing was I didn't even think he came off as a small government candidate anyway. No, no, no he wasn't. Like at all. He was just like he was promising like giant public works programs and you know universal uh, health care at the very beginning. Universal health care and, and and intervention in in uh foreign trade and and all of this all of this insane stuff. Like so the <laughs> idea that the that the conservatives are uh and especially the conservatives now they don't it's like they don't even pay lip service no. to uh, to small government or or free markets or anything like that. Yeah, like so when I when I first got into politics, I was a green, right, a green party, uh, right? That's because I was kind of following in, you know, and I think everybody kind of starts out in politics wrong. <laughs> that's what everybody does. It's how far yeah. they double down before. And most they people stay wrong. They yeah. just become a different kind of wrong. <laughs> yeah. And you know, I uh, I I was looking at like. Republicans and I, 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 I remember hearing something like kind of small lip service to small government, but then after nine eleven, it just it all went away. Like no one ever talked about small government during the Bush administration yeah, no. post nine eleven. It just it was oh, not man. on the table. Like yeah, everybody 9/11. was talking. We no, we needed to give the government more power to to <sighs> surveil people, to to search them at airports and and any kind of large Greek gatherings because terrorism was so bad and. All the stuff like I remember, like you know, we need to clamp down on the drug war because that's how Al Qaeda is getting financed. I don't think that's actually how they were financed. <laughs> at no, all. yeah, no, it was a that. That's the thing. Like I, it's it's hard to underestimate the importance of nine yeah. eleven and the growth of the state. Uh, it was, I mean, it's 
it was Titanic in 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 its implications. Well, like I the mean, because the Titanic was an inside job, right? Exactly. <laughs> uh, that's exactly where I was going with this. Was it? When, I love derailing you, but go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. No, no, no. Uh, <laughs> there's there's a Facebook page. I think it's like it's like four sixteen truth or something. It's yeah. whatever the date of the Titanic uh, it sunk. Four sixteen. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't remember what the date is, but it's something like that. It's it's super funny though. Yeah, it was uh, they King haven't posted it in a, or in a long time. No, that was fourteen. Sorry. Yeah, 14. but but it it really is like people say in a very shallow way how 9-11 changed everything and they think of it in terms of like this like this cultural thing of like america waking up and not and realizing like oh we're vulnerable and things like that that's that's completely not the point like what changed in government and people's there was a period of just total blind trust in the government after that and they passed so much shit that we're still saddled with and that have just metastasized and grown like uh, the TSA and Department of Homeland Security. It's affected all of our banking regulations. Like it's, it's so pernicious. Like that was, it was a watershed moment in the great and the growth of the state. And it's one of those things where, you know, it just, it's, it ratcheted up and there's not really, you can't really untighten that. I don't think at this point. Yeah. And the nine 11 truth wasn't really helpful at all. And like, I, I don't no. know. If, I don't think. You, I don't think if you, if you listen to my uh, the the podcast I did with Jeremy the last episode, um, or consp- I think it was called Conspiratards. Conspiratards. Uh, Conspiratards are do. Conspiratards do good. Uh, border Bordertarians don't. Uh, <laughs> and the whole mm-hmm. the whole thing like I was thinking about because you know the the JFK assassination um, happened or the, the anniversary happened recently. And I was really kind of getting back into like looking at all the stuff again. And I was really looking right. at it going like, sure, the JFK conspiracy theories are wrong. It's like, but they did a really lot like a lot of good because what ended up happening after that was the Vietnam war. And if you look at all the, the wars prior to that, if you didn't serve in the military, people looked down on you during oh, those for sure. wars. Like yeah. people would like shame you in public and put little pins on you, to, you know, to, to to insult you, like you're a coward. Um, if you were like, if you criticized the war, you were just the scum of the earth. Like you were just yeah. a horrible fucking person. But when the Vietnam War came around, it was okay to to criticize it, and there were still a lot of people who were like, "Don't criticize it." But you know that, that was kind of fading, and a lot of that had to do with a distrust in government that came from yeah. the conspiracy theories around JFK. And I and, yeah. You know, and in the nine eleven truth, all they did was make themselves look fucking crazy. You know, if, but if they had some like, if they were more like let it happen on purpose type of people, you know, that really Say seemed again. the let it happen on purpose, the lie hops. Oh right, right, right. Like if if that was the more prevailing kind of aspect of the nine eleven truth, maybe that would have spurred a little bit more skepticism in government. Yeah. That you know that probably wouldn't have led to things like the NSA taking over everything, uh, right? And Patriot Act and stuff. But instead, you know, it's yeah. it's uh, it's <laughs> people people who think that George W. Bush was flying both planes into the towers personally simultaneously. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it just yeah. Makes insanity. Yeah, Speaks and beams and Jews. There's 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 a, I think that's actually one good thing that's uh, come out of the the last election cycle is that n- there nobody trusts the official narrative like the, if there, I don't even know if there is an official narrative anymore of yeah. how of this, no, of the state of the country oh, okay. of everything, just the, like nobody trusts the media, um, which is good, which is, which is, yeah, it's kind of a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, nobody, nobody trusts the left. Nobody trusts the right. Like it is just, everybody hates Hollywood. Everybody hates Hollywood. I know it's like so. Like all of these kind of like uh, cultural bulwarks for the state um, are just in complete chaos and complete disarray. And I would like to think that's a good thing, but we won't really know until everything shakes out. Yeah. Um, and uh, but, you know what? I don't. I don't know what media to trust anymore because, like, I, I will see like res- what would be considered respectable news organizations post shit that are blatantly false. Yeah, that that is just like, li- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On its face, like, are you fucking kidding me? This is a piece, yeah. and I'm starting to see things like 
the New York Times trying to salvage something by writing a, a, a good piece on Ben Shapiro. And you're like, what is the right. fuck is happening in this world right now? <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know what to believe anymore. Do I, am I supposed yeah. to believe the New York Times now? I don't know. It is. <laughs> I don't All know. the stuff surrounding Ben Shapiro is is pretty funny too, because oh, like yeah. he gets called a Nazi and stuff, and he's like, "These people want to kill me. Mm-hmm. Like they literally want to kill me. <laughs> like I am a Jew, a very a very public Jew, <laughs> and like my my grandparents were murdered by the Nazis. Yeah. Like I, <laughs> it, it, he walks around with a yarmulke. He's like five At foot all tall. Times. He's a little he's a little kind of scrawny guy. Little fast talking scrawny guy, uh, you, you know. He looks like he. I, don't, I think he said he hasn't been in a fight since high school, and when he was in a fight, he got his ass beat. Like, <laughs> and you know, he he does he doesn't eat pork, and he advertises things on the show that he was like, I can't eat this, but I'm, I, I hear it's good because <laughs> it's right. got pork in it, yeah. and it's, or it's you know it's mixing different types of meat together, and it's yeah. like, and then like people are going like, yeah, this guy this guy is a white supremacist, and he's like. Oh, I know. I'm it's, not even it's white. Crazy. <laughs> like, what are you talking yeah. about? People are saying that Tim Pool is is a white supremacist, and he's like, I'm. Oh, I know. Half Mexican just... or half Puerto Rican or whatever. Yeah, and he and he's like, like he's he's as white as one of Chris Cantwell's girlfriends. Oh shit! <laughs> shit! <laughs> yes. <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> I don't remember what I was gonna say. That was pretty funny. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> um. Yeah, but I mean, it's it's like there's just been a complete an utter breakdown of political discourse and uh, it's impossible for anybody to, to, to talk to each other anymore. It's, it's really crazy. Yeah. I don't know, man. <laughs> I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, there's a, there's a part of me that kind of just loves watching the world burn. There's a little bit of the Joker in me, I guess. Um, yeah. There's I'm, the thing is like, it makes me uneasy because there's a lot of like, you know, people on every side of the spectrum, you know, having their careers ruined and like everyone's out for blood and people literally see each other as like mortal enemies now, which makes me very uneasy. Um, but at the same time, it's like there is literally no trust in the government on any side now. Like the, you know, we had election tampering for sure on the Democratic side. Uh, during the last election. No, that was the uh, Russians. I swear. <laughs> we'll find something. Yeah. Oh, they, yeah. <laughs> dude, I'll, Someday we'll find right. that smoking gun. <laughs> uh, oh, no, they did find the smoking gun. I'm, oh, remember, remember your point. The smoking gun was like they found that on Facebook, they paid like a couple thousand bucks for some ads and they were really bad. Like it was like, oh, see Bernie yeah. in some sexy poses. And I was like, I did that as a joke. Like Steve Miller yeah. Miller and I made a made a fake Teeny Bop magazine, you know, it we superimposed Karl Marx and Bernie Sanders' head yeah. on like some Zac Efron or something's body. But like, yeah, there's it was about the, as effective as that. I know, <laughs> and the thing was like, like because I've I've looked into this as well a little bit. Like the uh, the ads that they bought were so all over the place. They had like pro black lives matter stuff. They had, uh, anti Hillary stuff, like, so, like really crazy stuff. Yeah. And the, the oh, kind Russia of, today. go ahead. What, what the Russians and what Putin have always done is try to create as much chaos as possible. But if you're creating chaos, you can't really direct the outcome of, of anything. So it's hard for me to swallow the idea that, you know, the Russians, created all of this chaos and, and orchestrated it in such a way that it served deliberately served Trump. Uh, and that deliberately and that, and that like serves them, yeah. you know, like that, that part of it is like completely nuts to me. And yeah, it's like they bought Facebook ads. Okay. And a very, a very small amount of Facebook ads. Yeah. And some Twitter ads as well. Yeah. And twi- <laughs> Twitter, uh, uh, you know, has like come out against like Russia today and all of this stuff. And they posted uh, like immediately after this happened a couple of weeks ago that um, they, they posted this, it was like a pitch deck from Twitter where Twitter came to Russia today uh, and was like, Hey, like you should pay us, you know, to put ads or like, yeah, you should pay us to, to put ads on Twitter and we'll like feature them. And like, it, so 
like the idea that, you know, our social media companies were being like manipulated is completely false. Like they <laughs> were deliberately seeking out people to pay them to, you know, to, to put out what is essentially just nonsense. Um, so I don't know the there's been a complete breakdown in trust of our traditional systems. Like democracy has been completely dragged through the mud. So in that respect, I'm like, this is, this is positive, but there is like, there's a lot of, a lot about it that makes me uncomfortable too, yeah. because I don't like, I don't like the attitudes that people just have to be mortal enemies now. And that like people that you've known, you know, for your entire life are now somehow they've been hiding their, their clan hoods and robes under their beds. And you're, realizing that they're they're white supremacist kkk nazis or that they're like some sort of like closet communist who's just waiting to you know butcher people in the streets like it's it's kind of nuts to me that people believe you mean that like mk this is the reality you mean like mk and uh, james weeks are i guess i mean i didn't I listen to the podcast t- i know you're taking case <laughs> go ahead sorry <laughs> <laughs> no that was about still it over, was, so. was kind of the, <laughs> yeah that was kind of the end of my point um, but at the same time, but there's there's a little bit of truth to it because we we've, we've seen some people who had like little inklings here and there, and then like once the whole kind of Trump thing came about and the alt right was kind of becoming oh, for sure. a whipping a boy, like all of a sudden they were like, oh, we're not libertarians anymore, uh, we're yeah, fascists. <laughs> like, yeah, no, wait, for wait, sure. what? I mean, there's <laughs> yeah, there and 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 that's the thing is because there are there are groups on both sides that have that have become that caricature. Yeah. But it's the yeah. assumption that anyone who has a mild rhetorical disagreement with you th- is therefore yeah, you know, that's, a that's fascist crazy. or a commie is is completely nuts. Yeah. Like um so there's like this this YouTuber and he's been kind of making waves. He's called like uh what is it the um a Reich you know like third Reich and roll like <laughs> amazing album nothing like nothing to do with nazi outside of just some some aesthetics on the on the cover mm-hmm. um no but uh it's like reich reich wing watch and the whole thing is like we need to connect anything that's left of or anything that's right of hillary clinton to nazism everything right. Conservative, regular conservatism, libertarianism, anarcho capitalism, they're all Nazis. All of them, all of them, all of them. And literally all Hitlerites. Yeah, and they're like, well, Cantwell went alt right. Well, what about that? It's like, well, you know what? I have like two people on my podcasts who I regularly call, (laughs) jokingly and lovingly, you know, communists, Mm -hmm. you know, because they do kind of favor like a lot of left leaning stuff. Like, are you going to rewrite your thing now and say that anarcho capitalism is left? I mean, I'm sitting here like saying that gay people should be able to do whatever they want. Like, I don't care. If you want to miscegenate, go ahead. I don't care. Jews are pretty Mm -hmm. cool. I like Ben Shapiro. Like, and I'll say these things and it's like, but what about me? Like you're, you're picking out like five or six people but ignoring like all of the people who are kind of moving a little bit more to the left, like the anarcho capitalist right. group on Facebook is very to the left of most, yeah. like a lot of anarcho capitalists. It's like, what about them? So they're kind of, and then like, and I'm, and I'm, and I'm trying to make the point, like, well, as a separate point, those people are terrible. Yeah. All of them in that group. Everybody. They are terrible. <laughs> Hi, MK. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like, yeah, like, but at the same time, it's like, and he he sits there and he just says like, you know, like it's it's the same, and I'm like, well, let's let's look at it objectively, like let's see what what libertarians favor. They they t- favor free markets. Were the Nazis mm-hmm. free market? No. no. It's like, well, the, the 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 industries were privatized. I'm like, yeah, but they were sort of like state apparatuses because yeah, they I mean they they nominally held the title of ownership, but yeah. I mean, they had, when, when the government is telling you, you know, what prices you have to charge, what goods and services you can sell yeah. when and where you don't own it. Yeah. You don't. Yeah. It's literally, it was, it was socialism with nominal private ownership yeah. where it was like, yeah, you're the owner of this factory, but we control and no every one can, aspect of it. And no one can compete with you. That's yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> no, not, that's that has nothing to do with the market. That's yeah. that's a command economy. There, there, there is a little bit of kind of market forces, very small, that kind of keep it afloat a little bit and allow people to eat food. 
<laughs> yeah, that's but, about it. But, 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 but it's the type of thing. Like for a while, as soon as they went into yeah. into the war, though, like they like well, Germany experienced hyperinflation several times between mm-hmm. World War One and the end of World War Two. They also like when people are on rations from the government, you're not dealing with a market economy. Yeah. And I, I don't like this idea that we have to embrace fascism in order to kick out all the commies. So, we, but it's like these are ideas; they're not like implanted in yeah. people's heads. Think about a lot of the liberal. Like, I, wasn't Rothbard a communist? I know Walter Block was a communist. Uh, I don't think he was a communist. Okay, um, I, don't, I don't think he was a socialist, but he was not always a libertarian. He yeah, was not yeah, always a classical course. liberal. Yeah, but there's a lot of people that I know that are in the libertarian tradition that we look up to. Who started out as socialists? I don't yeah, look up to or, Mo- or outright commies. Yeah, yeah for I don't sure. look up to Molyneux, but a lot of people do. Whatever. But that guy started out as a, as a socialist. He's not anymore. That's mm-hmm. for sure. And like you go down the list, you'll start looking through all these people. Like I was a green. You're going to throw me out of a helicopter, like in in the year 2000 because well, obviously, but, yeah, whatever. <laughs> but I mean, like t- today, I mean, like you look at me now, and I don't advocate most of the things that I was talking about back in the day. Like, even the things that I sort of agree with myself on, I. Like gay marriage, which my rule was like, mm-hmm. you should let the government mandate that they should give them marriage license. Now I'm like, no, just let them do whatever they want. You don't need a government thing to do. Any- so there's like, you know, kind of nuanced differences. But at the same time, it's like you're going to th- – sure, you're going to th- you're going to throw um, – but you're going to let someone like, you know, Bad Mouse Production survive a couple of years ago because he was a libertarian. Well, now he's a tanky. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like people, people's minds change, and when 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 it becomes un like un, what's what's the term I'm looking for? Um, like th- like look at marijuana, <laughs> look at marijuana. Mm-hmm. Like mar- people used to smoke weed all the time when it was illegal. Once they started legalizing it, people were like, "Well, it's not fucking cool anymore," and usage yeah. dropped. If you try to right. if you make communism illegal, then it's like, well, there's something in here, right? <laughs> there's got to be something cool. Yeah, if in you make if you make things taboo, then for sure. Yeah. Uh, people people flock to it. Yeah. Um, the kind of yeah. like Nazis. The, I think that maybe that's why we're getting resurgence of Nazis because like maybe if it's like it's they're not cool to be a Nazi. Well, maybe there's something in this. Oh, maybe well, I should I mean, read for my sure. There, no. Well, and it's I I think that the the people who have gone. I don't even know how many actual Nazis are out there. Like yeah. I know that there are people now who self-describe themselves as like fascists and and, and whatnot. Fascists. Anarcho, uh, yeah. That that I think is a is a is a joke, a troll. No one's actually an anarcho-fascist. Uh, but I think so much of it just stems from, uh, you know, having this cultural rhetoric that you are a racist no matter what, like just being for, for the most yeah. insane shit, you know, uh, accusations of racism, like there, there used to be kind of a, a price attached to that. You know, nobody wanted to be called a, ra- a racist. It would make you radioactive. But now since everybody's racist, everyone is a white supremacist. You know, if, if you, uh, you know, just anything, if you, if you oppose Obamacare, you're a white supremacist now that like people stopped caring about being called that. And so it allowed people who were actually like that actually. to come out and be much more, much more open about it. Um, yeah. And they, and they don't pay the same social price that they used to. So it's one of these things where it's like, they just completely overused their antibiotics uh, until they were completely <laughs> in- ineffective. And now the disease is kind of out there. Yeah. <laughs> That's what happens when you vaccinate your kids. Oh, no, no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, exactly. No, no, seriously. Which is the point of this podcast. Yeah, no, no, seriously, vaccinate your fucking kids. Um, yeah, vaccinate your kids, please. No, fucking kids. <laughs> vaccinate your fucking kids. You got to say it like that. <laughs> yeah. Um. No, but yeah, I just, I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm, I, I just, yeah, like ideas, people go, th- people go through different kind of climates in their lives. And they're like, David Brock, where are we going to? I, I, I don't, I'm done with the examples of people trading sides, <laughs> but you get the idea. Like people trade sides all the time. And if you throw one all of the them time. off, like you don't, you're not going to get a Walter block. Yeah. It's, it's also just crazy. The idea that like you need to just kill your enemies. Yeah. Well, it's uh, a state terror. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, like, like it's, and especially in service of, uh, of freedom Yeah, that like, we need to have this like horrible, like murderous strongman government to 
just get rid of the people who don't think the right things. It's like nobody thinks the right things, first of all. Yeah. Like that, like like these people who still nominally can nominally consider themselves libertarians, uh, you know, who talk about throwing out commies and everything like that. It's like, you know, all the people on the right who you identify with now, like they're not for small government. Oh. They're not for any of these things. Like they <laughs> there'd have be you, nobody left. Have you read the Turner Diaries? I have not. Okay. I haven't read it, but I've, I've kind of read through the synopsis because I tried reading it and I was like, this is fucking terrible. Like I, I like my stomach was turning. It was one of the rare things that I would read that I would make my stomach turn. Um, so, so the, you know what the Turner diaries are, right? It's a novel. I don't. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. So the, it, it's a, it's a novel that was written by a guy written under pseudonym, something McDonald or whatever. Um, and it's basically kind of like the handbook. It's it's the Atlas Shrugged. I'm serious. This is the Atlas Shrugged of of, mm-hmm. of Nazism or white supremacy. And the the like ev ev like all all stripes people read it. Uh KKK Klansmen, alt right, mm-hmm. well, maybe some alt right. Um Nazis, they read this thing. And it's a kind of a manual. It's what what's the book? Um no, it's, I'm not. Yeah, it's like Atlas Shrugged, I guess. So it's kind of like a blueprint of how how the revolution is going to start. That's going to bring about this thing. And oh, I have heard of this. Okay. okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and so it's it's a story about like these people who realize that you know the the the, the Huat race is is under attack by the, by the blacks and the Jews. White people. <laughs> yeah. Huat people, and uh, they're under attack. And they realize it, and they 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 band together and create like this this army, and they go and they 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 kill off all the all the Jews and the blacks. But in the book, they talk about some of the first people that they kill were libertarians. Yep, exactly, exactly. They, because and they they were like these people were useful to us back in the day because they helped fight against the communists. And, you know, and, and some of the stuff that the blacks and the Jews wanted, but now they're not useful to us anymore. And they basically slaughter them because now they yeah. actually want to help the black people and the Jews. So they need to get rid of, they yeah. need to get rid of them. And they that, explicitly that is- say this in the book. And it's like, you, you, you can't side with these people because you're a useful idiot. That's what you are. Like, and as soon yeah. as they're done with you, they're going to dispose of you just like they're going to dispose of the communists. They're going to, they're going to be in the same fucking cell as a commie. Yeah. That, yeah. that, that is, <laughs> The thing that it, like it boggles my mind about these people, I'm like they these people will cut your throat at the yeah. first opportunity they get. Like they these people are like murderous, just disgusting, horrible people who share really nothing in common with you, except for maybe that like they're racists and and you know some of these people on the right are racist and they they share that, but it's they like libertarians in any and if any radical group grabbed seized power and you know was do it was implementing like these authoritarian you know like death squads or whatever uh were eliminating political enemies libertarians are the first to go yeah every single time yeah. every time we're, because we're going to be the helpful in the culture of libertarianism war. are dangerous yeah. to them we're going to be helpful they in the, the culture opposite. war yeah we're going to be helpful in the culture yeah. war to an extent and then we're going to be a detriment <laughs> because exactly. then we're going to start going like, oh, no, we don't need the state for that. And we don't, you know, like we can just let the gays do whatever they want. I don't care. Wait, wait, wait. You don't care yeah. that people are doing drugs? Yeah. Bye. It's like, hey, you know, like people. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, it's it's insane to me. Like any people who have these these alliances or you know, not even alliances, but but think that there is value in the actual alt right are, are absolutely insane. Yeah. They are. Uh, they're they're completely blinded by their hatred of the cultural left, who are terrible, uh, who are absolutely who are terrible. terrible. Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> I don't like the I don't like the insane cultural left. I also hate the insane cultural right. Um, but but you know, just because you share some sort of common enemy or animosity against someone else does not mean that these people uh, won't try and kill you, mm-hmm. or that they have anything else in common with you. These, this is the thing. The alt-right people are not for limited government, for small government of any kind. Yeah. At all. These – like yeah. everything they believe is the complete opposite of libertarianism. Yeah. Like what was it? I know Cantwell used to complain like, you know, like libertarians are letting the left-wingers take over the right-wing wing movement. I'm like libertarianism isn't a right-wing movement. It's not a right-wing movement. And then he, then yeah. he goes – and he goes he starts hanging out with the alt-right because he thinks that like that's going to be a bastion. And – 
he then he starts complaining about how the nat the not so net socks are are taking over the alt right. I'm like, dude, where's yeah, you I'm been? like, dude, that yeah, that was, it's like they're not taking. They were over there the before you, buddy. They were, yeah, yeah they, they, <laughs> that is the alt right. Yeah, <laughs> and then and then what does he do? Like almost immediately afterwards, he speaks at the 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 oh, what the fuck is the name of that group? Um, the Traditionalist Workers Party, I think that's what they're called. Oh God! Yeah, no, I know. And I know their what you're their, at, their their fucking logo is like the you know the three arrows pointing down, but it's in a pitchfork. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like oh my God! Are you fucking? And it, the the giant symbol is right behind him, and he's doing a speech with him, and it's like, dude, they're fucking socialists. <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah, like, yeah, it's it's insane. Like people, they're just explicit don't care. socialists. Yeah, yeah, but it, socialism will work. We just need to get rid of the Jews. It, it'll work under a, a huge lap. Right, right, exactly. Yeah. Right, right, right. It's insane. <laughs> no, it yeah, just, they, it just doesn't work, period. It doesn't matter if it's Jews, blacks, whites, Christians, Muslims, atheists. It doesn't matter. It's, it's, all, it's all a shit show. You're just, you're just changing the aesthetics. <laughs> yeah. That's all. Yeah, it's it's super frustrating that that some libertarians have, are so stupid to – to think that there is something of value yeah. in the alt right, and alternatively, it's super frustrating seeing liber- some libertarians who have uh, done the same thing with leftists and with Antifa and, the, and these other groups that are also like you would be first against the wall if the revolution came. They will <laughs> fucking shoot you. <laughs> they will kill you because they believe the opposite of you. They're a bunch of like, mindless jerks. Yeah, it's it's this the idea that like we have like the the it's people's fascination and focus on the culture war is it blinds them. It blinds them entirely to the reality of these other groups of what they represent and what they believe and what they want. Um, and it's just identity politics. I've, I've said this a bunch of times in, in other places. It's where the mind goes to die because once people start looking at, at things through the lens of identity politics, they can't see anything else yeah they can't there's there it is the one central important idea and that is it it's like uh, property rights go out the window you know like human rights are just gone at that point because you hate the left so much or you hate the right so much uh that you you know you have no principles at that point yeah and i i view antifa in the same vein i view the alt-right Absolutely. I think they're, the, they're, Absolutely. they're cut from the same cloth. And do you, do you know who Richard Templehoff is? I don't. Center, Center for Stateless Society. <laughs> C4SL. Oh, God. Okay. Okay. So there was this article that came out, and I, I got through like maybe the first three sentences, and I was like, Oh, is this shit. the uh, the Antifa are the real... Agorist defense organizations. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Look, like, I, I get... I. I get where he's coming from. He kind of has like this romantic view of what the, uh, what Antifa is. And, and in that respect, I'm like, okay, I, I, if, if Antifa was what they really were saying, like, we're going to get rid of the fascists. So I'd be like, okay, but they're not, <laughs> it's yeah. not, it's and, not what they're about. The like, other thing. Every, everything that I'm saying about these people, it's not to say that there is some actual danger of the alt right coming to political power and, and, you know, executing the libertarians and doing all this stuff. Like it is such a minuscule, they completely overestimate their numbers and normal people do not agree with them and find their ideas vile and disgusting. And I think when people find out what Antifa actually believes, they feel the same way. So I don't think that this, there is some sort of danger here that any of these groups is going to come to power. Um, but it is it's frustrating to me to see smart people uh not seeing what dangers there are and not and and not seeing that these people that they are allying themselves with uh not seeing them for for the evil that that, that they are and the evil ideas that they represent mm-hmm. and just the fact that you know should you know reality be suspended and and you know nazis take over the united states or antifa takes over the united states it's like not seeing what they're exactly exactly what their first step would would be is just stupid to me their first step would be to shoot the libertarians and then shoot uh you know the the other radical right people or radical left people who are ideologically a threat to them like everybody dies yeah okay so like antifa 
Um, like, anybody so, like, who look, holds a strong opinion dies. Yeah, like if it, if Antifa was just going around like punching Richard Spencer, I'd be like, ha, fucking bunch of losers. But so, this is some of the things that they've done. Like first of all, there was a um, a speech. I don't remember who it was gonna who it was for, but I remember it was like just some milk toast conservative. And what they were planning mm. on doing was they were planning on putting poison in the vent system, so that people who were attending the event would get like die and they were caught yeah. and they were arrested for on terrorism charges. The next one of the other things that happened was Ben Shapiro was going to give a speech at the University of Utah. And Ben Shapiro, Jewish guy, was the recipient of the most like of, of the most uh threats and nasty anti Semitic Anti-Semitic, racist yeah, anti-Semitic tweets. Tweets, yeah, yeah. Of any journalist in, in the United States during the election season. Of of anyone. It was of anyone. He, it was left like right? eight thousand. Yeah, yeah, it was like eight thousand anti Semitic uh, tweets. I don't, I don't think it was just I don't even think it was anti Semitic. I think it was just racism in general. Yeah. <laughs> anti Semitic yeah. anti Semitism included. Like he was a recipient of, of it. And what were they planning on doing? They were Antifa was organizing uh a massacre like they were going to like they were passing out ice picks to people and they said like let's get let's just try to scare them to come this way into the parking lot and then we'll ambush him he's the guy was like i got i got uh i got some some assault rifles in my trunk i got a, a shotgun a sawed off shotgun in my trunk and what happened was steven crowder of all people were just was just gonna make mm-hmm. this was just gonna troll them and he had jared or not gay Jared dress up like one of the antifas, um, mm-hmm. you know, made him look like a total fucking hipster. It was hilarious. And they were just going to troll them. And then next thing you know, like they were handing him ice picks and he was like, Whoa, uh, I didn't hear about this. Yeah. Yeah. And they were talking about like, we're going to ambush them and get them in the tr- uh, the parking lot and shoot them. And they were like, I got, I, I got to go to the bathroom and ran off yeah. and it was like, I, w- this was just going to be a prank. Like we're fucking, <laughs> they gave us yeah, this ice yeah. pick. Here's this evidence. And they went to the reporters and the reporters were like, who cares? And they're like, yeah. well, we have the police report. We have the videotape. We have a copy of the videotape for you. All you have to do is fucking right. run it and show that these people were going to like murder these people. There's a plan. We have evidence to prove it. And they were like, nah, whatever, you know? God, but you know for a fact if like Jared had bumped like some gay kid along the or some trans kid along the way, like oh, oh I'm sorry, they would have been like, look at this Trump supporting racist alt writer, oh, yeah, <laughs> assaulting. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, they they have a fucking clear narrative, you know. Do you do you think? Um, and this is not my idea. Um, this is yeah, someone else brought this fun. up to me. But uh, do you think that Richard Spencer is a Fed? Hmm. It's possible. I don't think he is. I, like, I, don't, someone, I haven't thought about it, but I wouldn't be surprised if it turned out he was. Someone in the alt-right has to be a Fed. Oh, I'm sure. Like, absolutely has to be a Fed. And it's like you look at, um, like, Charlotte, Charlottesville. Cantwell, you know, has this documentary made about him. And all of these companies, you know, they're pulling his websites down. They're pulling down Stormfront and all of these, like, Nazi groups uh, and – and people who are not quite Nazis but are alt right, uh, you know, they're they're getting their their domains seized and and all of this stuff. Nothing gets pulled down from Richard Spencer, none of his stuff, and yeah. he is basically considered like the the kind of figurehead of the alt right. So I think what's going to happen? It's next month. Um, I can't remember what day, but basically Twitter announced that they were going to purge all the the white nationalists and all the alt writers and all the KKK and you know Nazis off off of uh Twitter forever. But I guess the reason why mm-hmm. they weren't doing it immediately was because in some European countries you have to notify, you know, like purges like that within 30 days. Mm-hmm. So they're waiting. So it's going to be next month sometime, I forget when. I think that would be a probably a good clue is if he if he evades the ban. Because yeah, is, like his they, YouTube are they channel just is verifying them, or are they? No, they're uh, gone, gone. Oh wow, okay. Just I have just not heard outright. about this, and I have no problem with that. Like people are saying, like, oh, but my free speech. It's like, no, you don't have a right to people's platforms. If they want to get rid of you, they can get rid of you, and we can criticize mm-hmm. them for doing that if we want to. But I kind of don't care because that was always in the terms of service of all of these companies. They were always like, you can do whatever you want, just no racism, no violence, no, you know. No, uh, right. I, I, of illegal I, activities, and it's a lot of it's just kind of like hit, like it's a lot of safe bets, you know. Because if they put that stuff on there, 
a lot of people don't want to go to the, go to platforms where they're going to be inundated with, you know, kill the Jews unless you know unless it's kind of like historical things, you know. Right. I think I think there's uh, the issue that a lot of people have with this is that there is a very clear hypocrisy going on here because there are tons of people uh, on like these big leftist accounts who will say things like we should literally kill white people and things like that. And they never get removed. There was, um, I don't remember what, who it was or what the, or what the actual text was quoted. Uh, Leslie Jones said something on Twitter um, that, you know, was, it was basically a, a terms of service violation. I don't know what it was. It obviously, it was not like kill white people or anything like that. Um, but then someone else, uh, they didn't retweet it. They literally just typed it in verbatim on their Twitter and they got banned. Whoa. But they, they didn't ban Leslie Jones. <laughs> like, so there's, there's this thing where it's like, yeah, sure. You can get rid of all the Nazis, but it's like, there's, there's a clear political agenda was with this, these people. Was this post uh, Weinstein? I don't know. I can't remember. You, you uh, don't Tim remember Poole what talked about it? it. No, Tim Poole talked about it on, on, uh, on his YouTube channel recently. Um, yeah, because I think I think a lot of I think they're probably going to be changing their policy on that. I'm sure they're probably going to go start going after. Hollywood they are. Now. They're they're changing their verification policy. Uh, yeah. Like they've suspended basically like any new verifications for a while. Um, and that whole thing is so stupid. Like yeah. it's supposed to basically just say like, yes, this is indeed the person. We have verified the identity of this person. So it's like, you know, you can't have. It's like you could have Barack Obama verified on Twitter. So you know that that's Barack Obama's Twitter yeah. account. It's not an endorsement of what Barack Obama says. It's so when you have at real Barack Obama, who's not verified, who's tweeting, you don't assume that that's the actual Barack Obama. Yeah. But they've they've turned it into this this uh, approval thing. Yeah. Approval. Yeah. So where it's like you know these these right wing commentators say something, uh, and they get they get their their. Uh, their approval revoked or whatever. And it's like, well, okay. Well, they Why? are they suddenly not the person that yeah. they're claiming. Yeah. You <laughs> certainly, you doubt their identity now or like, I don't know. Yeah. What's the deal? Um, yeah. Cause I know that they were, they were really holding back Sargon of a from getting a check Mark, but why? Right. Like you would give Richard Spencer a check Mark, but you wouldn't give him. And then yeah, they that's eventually also super weird. Yeah. And then, and then no, yeah, th- that's probably another <laughs> probably proof that he's a fed. Right. Um, I don't know if it's proof, but it's it's or, odd. It's very odd. Spe- it's coincident. What's what's the term? Uh, <laughs> circumstantial evidence, I guess. That's at best. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that, and then, and then they ban him, and the and what he was doing at the time when they banned him was that he was arguing with alt writers. And saying like your your views on white supremacy are wrong. Like that's what he was doing at the time when he yeah, got banned. Yeah, yeah, he's like arguing against racism. Yeah, and they ban him. And oh it's like God. like oh Sargon. My God, has, come on. Yeah, and, and Sargon has done things that would you know that would rock the boat, but it wasn't that. Like what what did he say? He he tweeted at someone saying like I would uh, I would never rape you, <laughs> and and that got the left like infuriated like how dare you tell this woman that you wouldn't dare rape her oh my god and it was like yeah yeah they he had a debate with some sjw guy and he was like this guy is a terrible person because he tweeted at this lady who was trying to pass legislation to protect rape victims that he would never tweet like he would not to worry because he would never rape you and he was like okay Oh my God. We and live in she such was like, a weird like, time. And, and he was so, and he was like so infuriated and he was like trying to fight for her. And he was like, like it was, and then all of a sudden he was like, dude, you keep bringing this up. It's an, it's not a rape threat. It's a non rape threat. It's, it's the opposite. It's the exact yeah. opposite <laughs> of the rape threat. And by the way, this woman that you're defending, do you know what she said about that tweet? They asked her about it on a program here uh, in, in Britain. And she said, I don't care. I wasn't even home at the time. And when I saw it, I didn't care. Like you yeah. are angry for this woman and she does not even and she doesn't want your outrage. Fuck. She yeah. does not want your outrage. <laughs> like you're the only one oh that's outraged God. about it. So they didn't ban him for that outrage, quote unquote. They banned him for defending their point of view against racism. Like it doesn't make what any the- fucking sense. And then they will have Richard Spencer go on there and go like, 
Well, I think it's because Richard Spencer goes on there and says, like, yeah, we need universal health care. Socialism's not so bad. Conservatives need to get off their high horse. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, fuck. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, the, 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 everything is falling apart, and I'm just... Yeah, it's super weird. Everything is super weird now. Yeah. I don't know. So, yeah, go watch the tech. <laughs> Yeah, in in uh in con- in conclusion, yeah. the tech is a fantastic show yeah. and very uplifting and funny and dark and violent yeah. at the same time. Speaking of uh, because we talked about J- Jackie Earl Haley is great in everything he does. There's an actor I think he's like terrible in everything he's in, <laughs> like absolutely terrible. I think the only thing that he's ever the only reason why they put him on is because he takes off his shirt, and that's Zac Efron. <laughs> like, uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> like that's that's what he is. Like he's just there to get girls yeah. to get in the seat because they know that he's going to be in a movie and take a shirt off. But there was a movie where he was good and he didn't take a shirt off. And I was like, oh, he's not going to take a shirt off. I'll, this is interesting. And that was a really good movie. And it was called Parkland. And he actually did a really good job. He, like, the dude can act. How? Huh? <laughs> yeah. I think I, I'm pretty sure he's on steroids. Um, maybe. Did you see? Uh, so like, uh, I didn't see the movie, but I saw the trailer for Baywatch. Oh, I'm and- sorry. Yeah, I was exposed to that too. Terrible, but the guy—he looks like a monster. Mm-hmm. He looks like an absolute monster, and it's like, you like you look at his jaw, and it's just this like massive square. You know, it's like you didn't used to look like that. You know, like you were already an adult and didn't look like that. Like you have to he be looks choosing. Like Johnny Bravo now, yeah, yeah, <laughs> or the crimson chin. You know, like it's just like I was just like. Whoa, that guy's. I was just like, you have got to be on steroids. Yeah, but Parkland was really fucking good. Surprisingly, he was really good in it. Everybody was good in that movie, except for the one you would expect to be the best, which was Billy Bob Thornton. Like he he did a good job. Oh, that's and a shame. There was He's like, amazing in most things. Yeah. yeah, he there was one scene where they were watching the Zapruder film. They they just got to see it for the first time, and they saw they saw you know after right after frame three thirteen, like you know went, scrolled by. They were like, oh. And then, like, one of the Secret Service guys was like, yeah, you really dropped the ball. And then, like, he just flipped out on him. But that was, it was so yeah. like, it was it was so bad. It was a bad performance. But everything else even in that was really great. Like, everybody yeah. else was also really great in it. It was just that one scene. Yeah, Parkland yeah. was really good. Park, and it was about – it wasn't about the JFK assassination so much. It was about, like, everything else that was surrounding it. Just a pruder, mm-hmm. um, the FBI agents who was one of the FBI agents was the guy that played fucking Hopper. What's his name in uh, Stranger Things? Oh, I don't know the actor's name, but I know who you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. and then one of the guys from uh, the, the 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 main guy from Office Space. He was another FBI agent. Um, oh, who else was in that fucking like everybody? Like they had almost everybody was surrounding that kind of event. It was oh, and and Lee Harvey Oswald's brother. And his mother, oh, his mother was insane. <laughs> his mother, Lee mm-hmm. Harvey Oswald's mother was batshit. But yeah, like everybody just gave phenomenal performances across the board, except for that one scene. And I was really surprised because I was like, fucking Zac Efron can act. Why are they just putting him in movies where he takes his shirt off? Like, what the fuck? Because he gets a big paycheck for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Parkland, he didn't get a big paycheck. That was like a, almost an indie film. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Like most of these big actors, they do these giant you know they do like transformers or something equivalently stupid um because it pays just a ton of money but if you're ever in a film that is like oscar material they do that for almost nothing yeah um you you saw blade runner the new blade runner right i didn't not yet wow really i know you, or, i, know. You, I meant to you like- i just never got around wow I thought you would have been first in line. I thought you would have been fanboyed about it, just like fucking Star Wars. Yeah, I. The thing is, I I usually would have. I just I didn't get around to it. I was like I was busy, and then like it it didn't do well at the box office, so it was just out quick. And I wanted to see it. You you know, how why would you expect it to do well in the box office? No, I didn't. (laughs) Why would you expect it to? It's Blade Runner. Blade the first Blade Runner was the first one didn't do well. (laughs) Why would you think the second one? I don't know, but I wanted to see it, you know, on like in like an HDR theater and all this shit. And like, I just, I missed it. And yeah. Yeah. That, that whole I'll see, thing. I'll see it when it comes out on video. Yeah, <laughs> that whole, they knew that it was going to be a loss leader because they wanted to show off what they can do. With, 
And it was interesting because what made it interesting for me was like it was the first time that I went and saw a movie and saw special effects that had me going like, how the fuck did they do that? It, I haven't yeah, experienced. That's what I've heard. Yeah. I haven't experienced that since I was a kid. Because now you yeah. just see like Pacific Rim, and they just cram like explosions and fucking yeah, robot balls flinging around. It's like okay, I've seen this a million times. Yeah. Like they they can do this with an eight eighteen million dollar budget for Power Rangers. Of course, they can do it with you know a budget of two hundred million. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's not that fucking hard. But there was a there was some like the sex scene where they had the 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 replicant and the hologram over each other and they were moving yeah. in sync and you were like, how the fuck? How? Yeah. <laughs> That's not possible. <laughs> Cause there were like real actors that are doing it. You're like, what the fuck? Yeah. yeah. Just things like, and then they brought back, Oh, uh, what's her name? Ace, the fucking God damn it. The chick from Ace Ventura. Yeah. Um, uh, shit. Sh- Sean Young. Her, there we her, go. Yeah. Sean Young, Rachel. Yeah. Yeah. They brought her back. And she looked spitting image the way she did in the 80s. But it wasn't yeah. even her. It was all digitally. And I was sitting there going, like, how the fuck did they do that? Well, well it's And nuts. no Uncanny like, Valley. Did you, did you see uh, Wolverine, the, the Logan? Oh, God. That was great, too. Yeah, I loved that movie. But afterwards, they did so much face replacement uh, in shots that you would never expect. Where, like, uh, you know when he's, like, driving the limo around in that big chase sequence? Mm-hmm. Um, all of the shots of the interior of the car where he's driving, that's all digital face replacement. There was a stunt driver in, in the car. What? And there's like a bunch of scenes where he's running. Yeah. And it's not Hugh Jackman. It's it's like bananas. Because I was just like, holy shit. Like, I was completely convinced. Completely convinced. Um, like, the, the face replacement is getting is so good now um, that I'm just wondering if we're going to need actors at all anymore. <laughs> I know they were saying that when when uh, Final Fantasy came out, and I was like, no, yeah, yeah, the spirits within. Wow. I remember that. <laughs> I did, I was like, no, I'm not watching that. I I, I did see like sp- bits and pieces of it, like when it was on and people were watching it. And I'd come in and look at it and go, it looks terrible, but it, it's beautiful. But at the same yeah, time, I was I remember, like, I remember watching that and being like, this is awesome, but it's not Final Fantasy. <laughs> and it, and it, why don't, I, I'm not. I'm not big into Final Fantasy, so uh, I didn't really care about that. Like Nintendo ones were okay, but I was never into RPGs. Yeah. Uh, the the RPGs that I were into were Shadowrun and Chrono Trigger. Like those right. games are fucking amazing. But yeah. every every other RPG that came out, I'm just like I'm just not interested. But yeah, I remember looking at it and going like, "This is a beautiful movie," but it looks terrible. <laughs> like what's going yeah. on is pretty boring, but it looks yeah. beautiful. It was boring. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh, we got to save a plant. Yeah. Wally Great. did it better. <laughs> <laughs> Wally did it better. Yeah. Just watch Wally. That's Final Fantasy for you. Yeah, it's a much better Final Fantasy yeah. movie. <laughs> all right. I think that's pretty much everything. I think I covered yeah, everything. Even, I even the things I forgot, I remembered. <laughs> nice. All right. Just think of an edgy title. And you know what? People are going to listen to this and go like, Let's hear a story about Star Wars, then fast forward to the very end, and they were talking about fucking Blade Runner. They're like, "Oh, they're just yeah, talking about they're movies, everything, the entire thing." <laughs> and then we're like, yeah. "Fuck racists, <laughs> fuck commies." <laughs> yeah, yep. All right, man. Good talking with you again. Yeah, worms. Thanks for having oh, me. Oh no, we're not. Worms. We're not. No, I'm blinking that out. No worms. We're de- no worms. We're deworming ourselves. We're not saying worms anymore. Yeah, worms yeah. is not a word that we are saying. Yeah, worms. This, the new thing is uh, word to your wigwam. Is what? Word to your wigwam. Word to your wigwam. All right, I can do that. (laughs) Word to your wigwam.